epicenter of basketball for 15 and 16 year olds over the course of the last eight days. Last Thursday, it was the boys championship games in ninth grade and 10th grade. And today we are thrilled to bring you the girls championship games here on USA Basketball's YouTube channel. Alongside Pete Smith, my name is Greg Rakestraw. We start with the ninth grade game. The team in red you see on your screen, that is Pro Skills out of Texas. We saw a Pro Skills boys team make the final in on Thursday. They will take on all Iowa Tech. And Pete, how about this program in Iowa? Both their ninth and 10th grade teams have made their finals. We'll see their they're sophomores, if you will, coming up about 90 minutes from now. And that says a lot about their play because they really fire the ball, not necessarily fast, but they'll take good outside shots. But a great program headquartered out in Ames, Iowa, and uh, looking forward to seeing both these teams play. For the team from Iowa, most, not all, but most of their players have played at least a freshman year of high school basketball. For this pro skills team, the majority of their players are just entering high school. They will be class of 27 products. Now, these teams have all played six games to get to this point. They are both five and one. Both teams suffered a loss in terms of their pool play. They qualified for the round of 16 and have won three games to get here. There you see the starting five for pro skills out of Texas. Charlotte Cabin, Jasmine Bailey, Deandra Miner, Kalen Jackson, and Kaya Prestridge. For all Iowa attack for their ninth grade team. We'll flash their starting five of you coming up here in just a matter of moments as we're about to get underway. Avery Lauer, Karis Finley, Ellie Mueller, Trishel Miller, and Macy Camito. Head coach for all Iowa attack is Ryan Hahn. Earl Rooks is the head coach for Pro Skills. Our three woman officiating crew for this ninth grade championship game, Natasha Brown, Angie Arendt, and Deanna Key. Pete, final thoughts for this one goes live. Should be an up and down game. Uh, it's amazing how tall these pro skill players are for not even starting high school yet. They've just got really good size, particularly coming off the bench today. Ellie Mueller, who played for Dowling Catholic High School as a freshman. She will jump at center against Kaylin Jackson, who is six foot two. Officials are ready, and so are we in this Monday morning. Thank you so much for joining us on USA Basketball's YouTube channel. All Iowa attack in black, pro skills in red. And we play college rules here with the exception of the timing. So we play four eight-minute quarters like you would see in high school, but everything else, collegiate rules, including a 30-second shot clock, which is not a concern for Macy Camino from Carlisle High School in Carlisle, Iowa. A strong drive to start it off. It was a high post play set for her, and she went to her left and really got to the rim, attacked it well. On the Another attack, attack. <laughs> finding an easy look is Jasmine Bailey. Bailey from Dallas, Texas. She is a 400 meter junior Olympic champion. So safe to say she's got some speed in her game. Camito goes right back at the rim. Couldn't make it, but able to track down the loose ball. Long three-point shot, and again, we are playing the college three-point line of 22 feet, not the high school line at 19-9. Lauer steps on the baseline, out of bounds to Pro Skills. And I talked to Ryan Hahn before the game, and he said that's been the biggest adjustment, as you see. Watch the spot up just out of bounds, can't quite stay in bounds, good call. But also of note, we are playing the 84-foot court like we would right. see at the high school level as well. So a little bit of a hybrid here. For these elite national level players. Three in the corner. Does nice block go. out. Excuse me. Nice block out there nice. by Ka Karis Finley. So Finley. Cedar Falls, Iowa. Home of Northern Iowa. They're looking for a lot of matchup breakdowns. Just trying to get a lot of isolations. Take advantage of their quickness. And there's a foul on the drive there by Finley. So Finley will shoot a couple of quick free throws as the blocking foul called against Pro Skills. Finley had 11 points a game as a freshman for Cedar Falls High School. She had five points in the semifinal yesterday. It was won over Exodus by a score of 61 to 44. As Finley misses from the line. Nine players on the roster for all Iowa attack. Ten players on the roster for Pro Skills. 10 is the max you can have in this event. 
And actually, that's an awful lot of players. Right. I think eight's a good comfort zone. That's a sweet spot for most coaches. That way, everybody gets a chance to play. You get a look at Ryan yeah. out on the side lot. It's all oh, Iowa. Good high low. Hatter. Long shot does not go for Kaya Prestrich. She is from Oklahoma City. She and Deandra Minor of this team are actually Oklahoma City natives that play their AAU basketball out of the state of Texas. Kayla, Kayla Jackson should have got that ball in the dump down. She did a really nice job of diving to that block. Deep three. Catch and shoot three does not go. And the uncontested rebound controlled by Prestridge. And she'll lead the break for pro skills. And scores. Kaya Prestridge gets the second buck of the game for pro skills. And the team from Texas bumps their lead up to four to three. A couple of minutes into this opening quarter. And then Prestridge shoots the gap. Foot race back, step through, nice. and missed it. Everything with the finish. However, the hustle rewarded as Miner runs the floor and gets it to go. Again, Miner, one of the several players that's kind of playing a class up. She'll be a high school freshman this coming fall. Drive and kick, three, wing, got it. Avery Lauer, Clear Creek Amana High School from North Liberty, Iowa. It ties us at six. North Liberty's just outside of Iowa City. I'm going to let you play your Iowa card throughout <laughs> these two broadcasts with giving him one of your closest <laughs> friends is. Wing three nice. is up and good. Shot taken and made by Kalen Jackson. So first three of the four field goals made so far for pro skills. 6-2 swing guard Jackson is. This dribble drive and skip. Thinking about the long two. Instead, it is a longer three that does not go. And Prestridge has been all over the glass in the passing lane so far for Pro Skill. The pull up from 14. Good looking shot right. by Jasmine Bailey. Four different players have scored so far for Pro Skill. That's how you do it in an individual workout, i.e., Pro Skills. I mean, she just two dribbles strong to her right hand and right up with it. Bailey has multiple D1 offers. She has yet to attend class as a high school student. <laughs> But that is not atypical for this level. Turnover by all Iowa attack. Again, Bailey will pull from 16. Not that tough. Lost her balance just a little bit on the crossover behind her back. Here's Camito. She was all conference as a high school freshman at Carlisle High School. Deep three. This is from 25 feet away. No problem for Trishel Miller. She attends Sioux City East High School in the western half of the state, and it's Drake, 11 to 9. You have to remember, a deep three in Iowa has a different meaning with Kaitlyn Clark in that state playing basketball for the Hawkeyes. It is not lost <laughs> on me that we have two teams from Iowa here. I think there is something to the Kaitlyn Clark effect, and obviously, historically, dating back to well, the six-on-six yes. six days, Iowa has always been a, a hotbed for girls' high school basketball. But yes, it is a golden age, given what she has become, not just in her home state, but nationally at this point. Well, the, again, the transition is a deep three, a new meaning there. There's the high-low, and they definitely drew the foul there. A late whistle, but a good whistle. Patient Simmons did a great job of flashing from that high post wing and for a good high-low. Let's point out with the foul call, there's just one on each team. Again, collegiate right. WNBA rules, five fouls per quarter. There is no such thing as a one and one in this event. It is two shots once you get to a fifth foul. The pull from 16 does not go. Crashing of the glass. Elsie Larson just checked in for all Iowa attacks. Could not track it down. Eventually, Camino out of there with it. With the team representing the Hawkeye State. On the take to the basket, shot blocked, and then ball was rebounded by Grace Fincham right as she stepped out of bounds. So it's Pro Skills ball. But great athleticism there on the block shot here. Let's take a look at it. Good rotation over. She had help behind her, but super, super blocked there by Patient Simmons. Patience from Frisco, Texas, Lone Star High School. Whoa, a little high. <laughs> Simmons tries to distribute. Doesn't yeah. find her intended target, but ends up in the hands of Kaya Prestridge, who is fouled and will shoot two. Camino whistled for the foul. Prestridge has an offer already from San Jose State University. She had four points in yesterday's semifinal, and she will be a high school sophomore next year. Connects from the line. Good stroke right there. Ellie Mueller will check back in. As she will give Trishel Miller a breather. 
Mueller's high school team lost in the state semifinals last year at Dowling Catholic. That misses. This block out by Camito. Deep three, Prestridge, no. But the rebound by Pro Skills. The runner, no. And eventually Mueller out of there with it for all Iowa attack. Got to remember the longer the shot, the longer the rebound. So it takes either better quickness to the ball or better blockouts. Nice. All, all by her lonesome yeah. for three. And that is at home as Elsie Larson. Larson from Springfield, Missouri, which frankly is not close to Iowa. And Larson <laughs> knocks, it, knocks it down. And we're tied at 12. Both teams have just been playing man-to-man -man this first quarter. I'm not sure given how both oh. teams have shot it, you can afford to play zoning. It's either one. Right. Rebound by Mueller, able to rip it away, and then eventually draws contact and a foul. So because good. everything you've seen, obviously, offensively, has been five out, spread the floor, try to beat your man and find an open shooter. Again, modern basketball. My, modern basketball. You mentioned that when we had the boys' tournament here a few days ago, and uh, it's, it's the style kids play now. A little bit different, not a lot of continuity in the offense, just trying to get individual matchups and breakdowns and see if they'll give too much help off a driver. Now here's a set play, actually. There's a good backdoor cut Beautiful for layup. Beautiful backdoor yep. cut. Give that bucket to Fincham. Fincham from Iowa <laughs> City West High School. So as soon as we talk about how the offense is, they actually run a pretty good set and play for an easy backdoor layup. High ball screen, 15-footer does not go. Camino able to pull it down. Already six different players for all Iowa attack have scored. Wing three is good. That's Avery Lauer. Lauer, that her second made bucket, she's got six. She had 11, including three threes in yesterday's semifinal. Step back three does not go. And the rebound, controlled by Mueller, she's been great in terms of clearing up the loose change. Fincham with the rim oh, and one. And one tough tumble. Let's hope she's all right. Making the basket always helps. And now, partner, it's a five-point lead for Iowa. Yeah, and I think a big key you just hit on it. Uh, the rebounding Iowa's done now the last two possessions. A good outlet pass. You see her get make some contact, finish at the rim with contact. Charlotte Cabin just checked in for pro skills. Fincham connects. All Iowa attack 203 from the line early. Fincham had 13 points in yesterday's game. Not bad for coming off the bench for this no. lineup. Well, just a plethora of good depth and players for this. both these squads, actually. They both went into their bench very hard and going to shoot a pair of free throws here at Pro Skills well. This will be Patience Simmons. Came we'll off the, the bench, shoot left two. hand drive. Because she wanted to shoot with her right hand, she initiated the contact by Lauer to draw the foul. A little left-hand finger roll would have been probably easier to get off, but she did draw the foul because she went up strong and knocks down the first of a pair. Simmons, the fifth different pro skills player to score. She had seven points in yesterday's semifinal win against the Cal Storm Tarasi team. There's one for two. Back for the loose ball, and again, Mueller's winning yeah. every battle at six foot two. Under a minute to play here in the opening quarter. We are playing with a shot clock today. We haven't had a possession <laughs> come close to it yet. It's there in the kind of bottom corner of your screen. So we'll keep an eye on it. It's single digits for the first time. And that ball Ooh, just yeah, touched last, but I don't yeah. think the shot clock reset. They never came and never had full possession of the ball. So shot clock's at three. Has to go quick. Miller doesn't realize it. Shoot it. Yeah, she doesn't get it. No. Nope. Got too late. No. Nope. Didn't understand that. And again, it's, it, this facility is wonderful. It's not set up to have shot clocks above the basket. We right. had larger shot clocks earlier in the week. Unfortunately, had some problems with them. So now kind of even smaller versions. So coaches are kind of in charge of making sure their players are, are kind of aware for that. Shot First. clock and game clock virtually in sync here. Just spread the oh. floor, drive the lane, and Kalen Jackson gets her second bucket. 
Strong left hand take. These girls use both hands very well, driving to the basket and finishing around the rim overall for being so young. Larson looking baseline. Finds the team in opposite corner. Fincham tries a pass, just runs out of time. Caven could not get a shot off, and we have reached the end of quarter number one. Impressive by both teams. All Iowa attack has a five-point lead. We're back in 60 seconds with quarter number two. As you're watching the ninth grade U.S. Open Championship here on USA Basketball and YouTube. At the 2023 U.S. Open Basketball Championships, we had more than 60 teams from across 18 different states, and that included a division for the National Wheelchair Basketball Association. We were really happy to include that group as well. The purpose of this event is to bring the national governing body standards to the tournament space. And so USA Basketball puts on an event that's run by our guidelines and standards, which really are emphasizing fun and development. That promo you saw between quarters kind of illustrates the various levels of which USA Basketball has its fingerprints on the game. If you think about the men's and women's national team, and of course, a FIBA World Cup is coming up in the next few weeks. But we were here for the boys' US Open Championships. Pete, you've been a part of the 3x3 national championships the last couple of years. It really is all aspects of the game at all levels for USA Basketball. Yeah, there's so many aspects and so many good players that are playing for the United States and having the chance to represent our great country. And there's a couple of players in the 10th grade game that played for the under 16 youth national team earlier this summer. So there are players now that have multiple levels oh, of experience playing for Team seal. USA. Mueller could not finish. Hustled by Fincham. Mueller again able to wrestle away another loose ball. Boy, great possession though for Iowa to start the second quarter. Just great ball rotation, just couldn't make the finger roll. Almost too close to make that pass was Finley. And as she gets tied up, it'll be pro skills basketball. Well, I got to tell you, Greg, this all Iowa attack team is very well coached because they're very disciplined. Sure, in transition, they're going to shoot an open three. That's, that's kind of their mantra, but they've tried two times now to reward Ellie Mueller for such a great job she's done rebounding in this game and try to get her touches around the basket. Fincham, beautiful up and under, got it to go. Fincham's got seven. Fincham averaged eight and a half points a game and four rebounds a contest on a Bars team that went 15 and seven this past year. While I'm telling you about her, Jasmine Bailey does not care. She pulls from 17 and scores her third bucket and brings it back to a five point game. Yeah, trying to clear out, keeping the post open, but Finley loses it. Mueller, good recognition of a teammate. Camito for three. That does not go in Prestridge. Now, she has been kind of equal to what Mueller has done in terms of cleaning the glass for her side. Caven turns down a three. Simmons does not. And Mueller. Apparently has like a Bolitnikoff level of stick <laughs> on her hands because one hand that rebound. Fincham on the drive. She takes the bump from Simmons and Fincham. We'll go to the free throw line to shoot two. Nice outlet pass on the rebound again by Mueller. She just gets things started. Here she's released the ball there. and Good drive. Notice how she drives into it to initiate contact and create space to either make the layup or draw the foul. You know, we can talk about the overall skill set again this is a national championship so you expect a high level of play right we talk about the athleticism that's just simply what you're born with or blessed with in, in terms of height what isn't a given is basketball iq and that has been fun to watch from both these teams so far yeah iq and sense i call it yeah it just has a natural sense finley a rare miss but on both free throws and mueller throws it away the step through and offensive yeah. foul Player was set, she was outside the semicircle. Offensive foul against Pro Skills. I love the idea of taking it to the basket there, but, but the defense won on that one. 
She did a great job, that being Karis Finley, of just holding her ground. Let's take a look at the replay. See, that is picture perfect. She did get bumped in the face a little bit with the elbow. I, I thought it was a good idea by Bailey to try to do that, but defense won that time. Tylee White just checked in, giving Avery Lauer a little bit of a break here for all attack, or actually Karis Finley taking a break. So 22-17, tough pass to complete, and eventually a turnover. Yeah, so. never really materialized, Greg. I, I saw the play materializing, and when I say it didn't materialize, it materialized, but not very well run. Good defense overall by pro skills out of the Texas-Oklahoma area. Players from two different states on this team. You reference White coming in. She is one of the two players on this all-Iowa attack roster that has yet to play high school basketball. She will be a high school freshman. She's playing up a grade as happens at this level from time to time. Setback three does not go, and guess you, Mueller grabs another rebound. She got to be getting close to double digits already midway through the second quarter and rebounds. White will attend Valley High School, West Des Moines, Iowa. On the drive, just throw it up on the window because you know Mueller's going to go get it, and she's fouled. Ooh. Not the strongest putback opportunity, but she did get enough wrist as she went up to draw the foul. Mueller had 10 points in yesterday's, or the final win against Team Exodus. Yep. There you go. Our cameras are everywhere. Great job. Got her on the wrist there. You'd like to see an offensive rebound player gather themselves a little bit and go up stronger, but bottom line is she got the rebound, misses the first free throw here. Couple of points left on the line so far by all Iowa Tech. Here we have a good look at Ryan Hahn, the head coach. He's assisted by Dixon Jensen on this all Iowa attack team. Another rebound by Finley. Finley able to wrestle it away from pro skills. Mueller, not that time, but second verse, same as the first. You go right back to the free throw line to shoot two. Quoting a little bit of Hermes Hermes, I like that. Henry the eighth, I am. 6-2 power forward from Dowling Catholic in Clive, Iowa. Knocks down the first this time she does. She's on the board with one. And let's explain to our viewers, even though you are based in the state of Indiana, <laughs> your connection to the state of Iowa. Well, my connection is I, I go out there frequently. Uh, my close friend Fran McCaffrey is the men's basketball coach there. My former roommate for three years when we were younger coaches and before we got married. and. Uh, get out there as often as I can to the beautiful state of Iowa. And Franny was here because his youngest played in this event on the boys' side last week. Yeah, Jack played for an AAU team out of Minnesota. He's going to be a junior this year, 6'8", six, 6'9", six, range right now. and uh, Actually is, goes to the same high school as Grace Fincham does on this all-Iowa attack, I see right. West. Back pick, layup. Couldn't Good. get it through the sea of arms yep. on the inbounds pass. Uh, Iowa well defended there, that play. Adriana Drake kicks it to Deandra Miner. Here's Jackson. Prestridge will fire. Misses. Long rebound. Saved, but right to a AIA player. I'm going to call him athletes in action at some point in time today. <laughs> Deep three. No. Another long rebound. Finch him on the hustle. Just couldn't track it down. And then... Kind grabbed her on the leg, I yeah, think, Greg. Kind of a frustration foul. Yeah. yeah, That's not a bad foul. Stops the fast break there because they would have had numbers because Finley, I should say, or I'm sorry, uh, Fincham was not going to be able to get back in time, that's for sure. Timeout called by Pro Skills and our timeout rules, again, similar to college, not exactly like college. College, you get four timeouts, but it's three thirties and a full. This is two fulls and two thirties, and this is the one of the two full timeouts that Pro Skills elects to take is take a look at the replay and the foul assessed to Fincham. Yeah, on the legs. Kind of did a leg whip there just to stop the fast break. And as you referred to, probably a little bit of frustration there as we go inside the all Iowa attack lineup and huddle. In our second game coming up at 11 o'clock Central Time, 12 o'clock Eastern Time, will be the 10th grade version of this all Iowa attack program. Took on a team based out of Minnesota in North Tartan. Yeah, they got some players, too, doing my homework here before. It was, it should be another great matchup here. It should be. It's a championship game here. 
This is, again, the finale of eight straight days of basketball. Put together in part with the College Basketball Academy, USA Basketball, Canada Basketball, also included as part of this. There are 16 courts throughout this facility, and there is literally activity taking place, I think, on all 16 of them right now. It was four days for the boys that was capped off last Thursday. Girls took over as of Friday. And business wraps up in Memphis as this is the end of the summer AAU circuit as of this weekend. And this facility, as you made reference to, is just beautiful. 16 courts, as you mentioned here. Memphis uh, Sports and Events Center, relatively new. Uh, like, like you mentioned, it'd be nice to have shot clocks on top of the glass, but we're being selfish there a little bit. Zone now by Iowa, 2-3 zone. And right away, she finds the middle. Prestridge attacks Prestridge. immediately, yeah. and ball will be out of bounds to all Iowa attack. First change of defense by either team here in the first half of this championship contest. And both teams had, had kind of got a little stagnant. Offensively. Camito. You know, she hit the first basket of the game. It's been relatively quiet since then. There's a <laughs> three. That, that is good by Tylee White. Hasn't played a high school game yet. Back in her home state. 26-17. Lead grows to nine, which is now its largest for all Iowa attack. Great defense. Yep. Love the defense of being played there by Karis Finley. Well, Finley has already drawn attention from Creighton amongst other schools. He has an offer from Bradley as well. That is the fifth team foul, so Finley will shoot two at the other end. As a coach, you like to see him get rewarded for playing great defense there, and she does with a pair of free throw opportunities here. Misses the first, though. One of three at the line so far for Karras. Subs in. Charlotte Caven has not scored yet. She just checked in, wearing zero for the Pro Skills team. Well, all Iowa attack now has a 10-point lead. Yeah. And that is with leaving some points on the table from the free throw line. It's been kind of quietly done, too. On the drive, Pro Skills could not finish. Good job to wrestle that ball away <laughs> by Avery Lauer. Oh. And then Finley, let's hope yeah. she is all right. We could kind of see that collision coming. She could not. Thankfully, she pops right back up. And Finley kind of got there last, so she commits the foul. It was patient Shimmons that sought, shot the gap and able to draw the contact and create the turnover. You know, I could almost, on the, watch that replay, could go either way on the foul, actually, on the angle when you see the replay. But the view the official had, I can justify that call, too. Line right. change here for all Iowa attack. They'll sub three players out. Camito, Finley, and White all get a breather. They have played eight of their nine so far I as all that. Iowa attack. Prestridge has not been able to find the range that jump shot just yet. No, today. she's a good shooter. She, that was a good look for her. Pull up three. That is no good from Romy Croat. Her first look of the game. She, too, is yet to play any high school basketball. She will be a freshman. Well, the offense has just simply gone cold for pro skills. Well, they're just going coast to coast pretty much on transition. And not hitting an outside shot makes it even tougher. Going to hold on the feed, yeah. Is fouled, which means she is guaranteed to get two free throws. Although she is just one of four from the line so far. Yeah, pro skills just one bucket since the start of the quarter. A foul goes against Kalen Jackson. Mueller misses. Now you said it, partner. They're leaving some points at the line. This could be a 15-point lead if they just knock down a good percentage of their free throws. But you still rather have the lead than not have it one way or the other. Missed it again. So Mueller now one of six from the line. Caven catch and shoot three. Not that time. Their attempt to save the ball inbounds goes for not. Kennedy Borders could not track it down. 
know, early in the game, Pro Skills was getting second and third opportunities, which allowed them to have a short lead for a while, small lead, and keep it close. But it's one and done for yet, the Texan team yet, right now. Yet again, the managers remain undefeated in terms <laughs> of wiping up any bit of perspiration on the floor. Prestridge. Oh. Let's hope she's all right. That was quite the, the hard hit that she took. Yeah, she had the basketball right underneath her when she hit that sideline, but she's grabbing her right wrist. Yep. She's done a good job on that right wing. She denied the pass one time and got a steal and, and break away. And this time here, that same wing uses the outside hand. Nice job. And watch the right wrist as she just tried to brace herself. Just a little bit of a twist. She's going to try to shake it off here. As you take a look at Earl Rooks, the head coach of the Pro Skills squad. Back cut not there for Iowa. Shot clock at 13. Second time of the game we've referenced the shot clock only. Fincham, low block. Oh, Prestridge tried to draw contact. It wasn't there. Enough to fall down, but not enough to draw a foul. There's going to be contact deep three. And you're right, the Pro Skills <laughs> offense is just completely kind of evaporated. Yeah. Mueller, the catch. She's looking for her first field goal, but she'll draw a contact yet again. And even if she's not making the free throws, she may foul out the entire the other team at some point in time. Yeah, she's doing a great job at both ends rebounding here. Dixon Jackson on the sideline here, going to get a chance to talk to her about her free throw form. and. Try to see if she can knock one down here. You see Coach there, right there, Coach Jensen talking to her. Hold your follow through. Flick that wrist a little bit better. But she's she's been the difference maker in this game. She has done a great job defensively on the boards after the first few minutes and offensively, as you may reference to, just has drawn a lot of fouls on this Pro Skills team. Just hasn't connected. So Pro Skills takes the timeout. They will have now two remaining for the remainder of this game. And this is the first of two that we'll have for you on USA Basketball's YouTube channel today. Following this will be our 10th grade game. Again, all Iowa attack. And we'll take on Tartan, or North Tartan, rather, out of Minnesota. So an all Midwest final. So those two players in the red jerseys. So the ninth graders for all Iowa attack wearing the black today. The 10th graders, they're wearing red. <laughs> so you'll see them in a different color coming up in the game that follows this one. Back to action, two shots here after the timeout. In the background, you hear all these buzzers. I, I'm sure you can hear it on the broadcast too. Ah, she, there we go, good coach in there by Coach Dixon. Got her to make the first one. You just really have to concentrate on your court because it can be very distracting sometimes. They're used to it, don't get me wrong, but Got to pay attention, knocks them both down. Yeah, it's a football saying to say you play to the whistle. Right. Here I think you play until the official points at you. And blows the whistle loud enough you hear it over the whistle on the other court. 11-2 <laughs> is what all Iowa has outscored pro skills here in this quarter. Until that moment there, Kaylin Jackson, she now has seven to lead pro skills, just their second field goal in the last six minutes. Well, the timeout helped them. They got a little bit under control, a little better shot selection there. That's not just a bad Ooh, break. They yeah. had inside position, yeah. high arcing rebound, and it leads to a look from Lauer, who has made now three threes in each of the last two games. On the drive, and that'll be a blocking foul. Yeah. Coming up against Finchip. Strong drive by De Deanna, Deandra Miner out of Oklahoma City. Grind prep. She'll shoot a pair here. As you see, Coach Rooks talking to him again. Miner had 13 in yesterday's semifinal win. She has an offer from both Oklahoma State as well as San Jose State University. Para substitutions check in. Miner makes the first and the second. If you're pro skills, what do you got to change at half number two, partner? Shot selection. Shot selection and get to the offensive boards. If someone drives, you need someone on that weak side to crash the boards. They've kind of been standing out by that three-point line, watching their teammates drive and not getting any second opportunities. I don't remember any in the second quarter, actually. Finley, no. Oh. <laughs> but 
Harris Finley will go back to the free throw line. And now this will be free throw 16 and 17 that all Iowa attack will have attempted in the first half. Yep, clearly contact there by Prestridge. Got beat on the first step by Finley. She's got a quick first step, and it really helps her defensively on, on stopping drives. She's done a great job defensively in this game. Finley's high school team had a 14 and six record this past year in Cedar Falls. A miss there. Oh boy, got a run out there. Iowa didn't have anybody back on defense. They do now. Caven kind of lost her position underneath the basket, but to her credit, hustles, realizes she has yeah, space. Yeah. She's on and the board. Splashes it home. <laughs> Caven hit two threes yesterday. Also a high-level volleyball player is Charlotte. 35-23. Iowa looks to answer. Cannot do it. And the fight for the rebound. Pro Skills has it. So a bucket here makes it a 10-point game. There's plenty of times we've seen in previous games in this tournament, particularly on the boys' side when you and I did the championships. Foul on the floor. Two free throws yep. coming up. Take a look at it. Right side drive. There's the reach in by Finley. Thought she got her tied up, but it was after she had her arm there. Tylee White will check back in next after the first free throw taken. Minor connect. She's a perfect three of three from the line. The game is set about free throws shot by all Iowa. This will be free throw number eight to be attempted by Pro Skills here in the first half. Lead has been as many as 15. It's now down to 10. And they are six of eight at the line, which is keeping them in striking distance down double digits at 10. Quick three, buried it. I, I allow her, she's made four in the half. She's four of five from three, and her shot pocket is so quick when she catches it. She's got it up and at him. There's a, another job of taking a charge, another great job, I should say, Greg, by Karis Finley. And also a great job of recognizing exactly where on the court right. she is. As again, she has to get to the outside of the semicircle. She planted herself perfectly outside of that semicircle. Almost a steal. All Iowa can hold for one here. If they can do that against the oh, pro trap. steals trap. Yep, they're not going to let them. They're going to try to trap it. That's the pass they wanted to steal. Iowa did a good job getting out of that trap. They're still playing Helder Skelter. Straight man now for pro skill. Backdoor cut, yep. Perfect. <laughs> yep. White lays it up with air. Uh, I love watching that. Uh, great backdoor cut. I saw it coming. Great reversals. They got the diversion on the weak side. Great job, by Iowa. What a great finish. Up 15 at halftime. 40-25 is our score at the break. All Iowa attack leads. Pro skills out of Texas. We'll take this quick timeout. We'll come back. Third quarter action comes your way next as you're watching the ninth grade U.S. Open. Women's Basketball Championship here on USA Basketball and YouTube. Welcome to the USA Basketball 3X National Championships on the campus of Colorado College. We're gonna have some great action. Looking forward to it. Oh yeah. Let's go. Right now. Energy right now. Defense! 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 Get out, get out, Pat. Grab the rebound, let's go! Incredible experience. I mean, talent here, a ton of great teams, and just been a lot of fun. I like the fast pace and the competitiveness. It's Championship Sunday here for the USA Basketball 3X Nationals. It's been a great dichotomy between the two brackets. The men's teams are more older, experienced players. And then you've got the college players on the women's side that have really embraced this format.
the USA Basketball 3X National Men's Championship game. Here we go. Good slip, yeah. He rolls to the goal on a nice find and yep. throws it down. Answer for dead. Down the baseline. Finger roll up and in. Wallace, quick outlet to Iverson for the corner two, and he got it. Wallace takes Travis to the baseline, scores, and he's fouled. Baker almost tied him up. Fredette spins into space and hits the two. Showtime has been the more aggressive team in this game. They have. They've played very well, and, and Team Miami hasn't got a lot really going. They've had to earn their shot. And the shot partially blocked by Wallace. A two-pointer can win it for Showtime. Baker, though, will throw it down with two hands and put Showtime on the brink of winning this matchup. Brown Jr. initiates against Barry. Takes him right to the rim. And, and roll up and game in, and that'll winner. Do it. Showtime are the USA Basketball men's 3X national champion. We have one game left, so don't change that channel because this is going to be an outstanding one. The women's final is coming up next. Here we go. Jackson takes it to the rim and scores. Clear screen for Rosnick. Rosnick knocks it in. Jackson's open for a two to tie off the back of the rim, no good. Molly lets the rebound carry him out. She'll pick it up and shoot it and hit it. She's oh, in my. the zone. Jensen gets the step on Brown and scores. Boy, Creighton's running out to a five-point lead. No space to shoot. Now Molly attacks against the Jesus. Put oh. it up, put it in, and drew the foul. Now Creighton a point away. Jackson takes Molly to the goal. Got the roll. Fatigue started to set in big time. For both teams. Jackson hits the two in the three-point game. Hey, oh, Jensen got the step, and she'll soar to the goal and put it away. Duke yeah. fell asleep for just a second. Jensen capitalizes, and Creighton is the women's 3X national champions. Highlights from half number one, this ninth grade championship that sees a 40-25 lead for all Iowa attack. Greg Regstraw, Pete Smith, as the highlights fly by. Pete, what catches your attention for the first 16 minutes? Well, you're going to see really good ball movement in these highlights when the black jersey team, the all Iowa team does. They've done a really good job sharing the ball. Pro Skills had about a seven-minute lapse where they got one and done. Their shot selection was bad. Didn't get a second shot, as I just mentioned. And just, just really good team play. I, I don't think... Our Iowa attack has uh, played probably better in this tournament. They're just really clicking. I could tell by the reaction of their two coaches. Uh, they're just really happy with their play. And defensively, Karis Finley has taken charges. Ellie Mueller has done a great job defensively. Here's a late highlight here uh, by Charlotte Caven knocking in her only three. Towards the end of that second quarter, Greg, they started getting some better shots. But as you're seeing here, there's a good pull-up. Great pull-up there by Jasmine Bailey. So we get you back to live action. A 2-3 look here by all yeah. Iowa attack. They did that right at the end of the second quarter. Otherwise, it's been all man-to-man -man defense by both squads here. And I think it's a good call by Iowa right now. What the heck? Let's see if they can make an open shot from outside. You've got Mueller dominating the boards deep. <laughs> and got it. Came it. Wow. Her second made three. That's just such a great change in the game. I'm not sure it's great speaking from as a coach. Just how deep and the range players have nowadays. That was two on the shot clock when she let that go. That was a had to and she made it. Mueller. Lost it. Shot missed. Camito. Okay, good start so far by Pro Skills. Get a three, get a stop. The runner yep. is good. Back-to-back -back buckets, and Adriana Drake gets her first field goal of the game for Pro Skills. Iowa in between defenses there. Didn't know if they were in zone or man. Drake had three points in yesterday's semifinal for Pro Skills. So back-to-back -back buckets for the team from Texas. Four out, one in. Mueller just going block to box, seeking the ball. And that'll be a foul. Drake yeah. just good idea. Just couldn't get there yeah. in time. I like the idea by Adriana Drake. Out of Little Elm, Texas, as you take a look at Charlotte Caven. You ever been to Frisco? I know where it is. I, I have, have not been, been to, to Frisco. Frisco. Yep, I have been to Frisco. It's a big state. I don't know if you've ever been to Texas. It, it is quite sizable. <laughs> you don't mess with Texas. Though so Iowa's messing with them pretty good here, 10 point lead in the third quarter. Camino on the drive, lost the way up. 
but it was touched last by Pro Skills. Shot clock at 11. Would have liked to see Deandra Miner slide over and try to take a charge there. Just set the tone of you can't drive on us. White, That's again, was that off her yep. foot? Yep. Yep. Well, simply put, Pro Skills is a lot more sharp to start quarter number three than we saw in quarter number two. So in Iowa with some lineup changes. Tylee White start in the second half, didn't play a lot in the first half, did have a three. A little 2 2 1 yep. trap that works for all Iowa attack. Lauer, who's got oh. four threes <laughs> on the floor. Mila was just jumping up down like a pogo stick. She was wide open in the post. She barely got out of that lane. She's been in there about five seconds. Mueller <laughs> with three points all from the free throw line. Gets it now. And then, yep, they you did are call. correct. <laughs> they did call now, the what, three what seconds. You, what's <laughs> unique is that you're limited to two coaches on the bench in this game. Because you and I both know in high school or college, there's about five or six coaches on a lot of benches, and there's one guy <laughs> whose job is to yell three incessantly <laughs> the entire time. Kick it out for three. Nice ball movement on the transition. High arcing yep. three is good by Jackson, and all of a sudden, this is a seven point game. Yeah, sharing the ball much better. Good passing by Pro Skills there. So an 8 0 start by Pro Skills here to the second half. Finley for a triple. No, but. Good weak side oh. glass, put it up and in by Lauer. She's got 14, her first two-point field Boy, goal. Great step in on the ball fake. Got her defensive player off her feet. Had a, the shot clock didn't start properly, hence the reason for the official's time. That will allow Trishel Miller to check back in to replace Tylee White. Miller had three points in the first half. Now Iowa back with their starting lineup here. I mentioned White got the call to start the second half. I was going back to man-to-man -to -man defense. Pretty good idea. I, I'm not crazy about starting a half in zone. I just I don't think players play. Now they're going to trap out of it. I love this. And a steal. Yep, I love this idea. Get rid of it. Mueller. Miller. Lauer. But a Miller mess. on <laughs> contested board. Finley <laughs> fires and almost <laughs> banked that one home. A rare miss, though, by Lauer. She is four of six now from three. Trying to answer is pro skills. And again, Prestridge, she has been what Mueller has been at the, at the other end in terms of rebounds for her side. I was getting ready to say the same thing. She is the only one that's been a consistent rebounder for this pro skills team and rewarded by attacking the basket on the offensive rebound. She's going to get to keep possession. She's going on the floor before the shot. A back and forth game till about the two minute mark of the opening quarter. All Iowa attack their 15 point halftime lead, match their large the game. Fincham in, Finley will have a seat. Fincham had a great first half off the bench for AIA. Drake off the window, does not go. Whoa. And <laughs> A putback three, doesn't happen very often. That's the more conventional putback look that goes for DeAndra Miner. Jackson said, I got the rebound, I'm gonna shoot it. Took it right behind the line, but got the basket on the offensive rebound. Miner with eight, still a three possession game, but the object in the rearview mirror is getting closer for all Iowa attack. And a timeout yeah. called, a 30 second timeout by all Iowa. I think Ryan Hahn heard you, Greg Rakestraw. I think he felt like the momentum had slipped away, and let's let's get a good shot on this possession. He's going to set a play up right now. Expect maybe a backdoor play or an inside uh, look to Mueller, I think, on one or two passes. In terms of the development of these players, again, players at this level have been either playing for their high school team or maybe a, a middle school program for those that will be incoming high school freshmen. But you're at the end of April and May with your AAU circuit, June with your high school team, and now the entire month of July from an AAU standpoint at a, an elite national level. What sort of rest is needed for these players coming up uh, after today's action? Well, after today's action, several probably will do spring, or I'm sorry, fall sports. Get to volleyball, get to soccer. Uh, actually, a good change of pace, I think, personally, as a former coach, is good. You know, use some other muscle groups in other sports or take a little bit of time out. Still do your skill development, but the constant play of going 84 feet, 84 feet. Time to give the body some rest. Nice choice by Mueller. Left hand got it her first field goal. 
And she had been reluctant to kind of turn off that right shoulder. She's always kind of gone left to go yeah. to the right hand. Good drop move that time by Mueller. Well, again, good timeout by Ryan Hahn and had that set play for her to get an opportunity to score. Haven on the drive, off the square. Her first two-point field goal, she's got eight off the bench. And she'll attend Wakeland High School coming up this fall as a freshman. Camito on the foul, drive, foul, and that'll yeah. be a blocking foul. She was still sliding. I love the idea, and I don't think she, she thought, it, thought it was that bad, but she kept sliding. Take a look at our replay here. Moving, moving, never got her squared up. Excellent call, two free throws, the reward for Mary Camito, or Macy Camito from Carlisle, Iowa. Camito rated as the fifth best player in her class in the state of Iowa. Prestridge is gonna take a break after that foul. Checking in for her is Patience Simmons. She had some good minutes in the first half, particularly the first quarter, very active in the first quarter. Camito goes one for two, Fincham. Able to track down the loose ball. Iowa's got the 50-50 balls overall in this game, and that's been a big help. Shot clock didn't reset properly, hence the reason for the stoppage in play. They'll change it down to 18. And shot clock 30 seconds, but off their offensive rebound, it's 20. Okay, looking for a post-up if they get the angle. They don't have it, though. Mueller was trying, but pretty good job fighting her off. Kaylin Jackson down there in that post. You always try to get a gravy basket on an out-of-bounds play, an easy one. And then you just take your medicine and set your offense up if you can't get an easy one. Shot clock at four. Camito, here's her teammates. Ball's got to go up. Miller. Didn't hit the air ball. Yep. Yep. And that is part of the adjustment of playing at oh, this yeah. level. Yep. I was going to stay in man to man full court defense. Deny the inbounds for a second. Miller did a good job. Drake all the way down, camping in the corner. Couldn't knock on a three, could throw skills. That was Patience Simmons that missed it. Oh. And for the most part, <laughs> all Iowa has limited the amount of putback buckets. Fincham with wide open spaces with 11. She's the second Iowa player to get into double figures, and it's back to a 10 point lead. And that's, that's what got pro skills behind that second half or in that second quarter was quick shots out of transaction. Transition. Mueller had the rebound, lost it, then got it back via a block shot. And Camito goes 84 feet, and Simmons got a lot of ball, but got just enough by in a follow through where two free throws are coming up for Macy Camito. Sounding like an old coach, she kind of deserved the foul because the ball was never stopped. Your number one rule as a defensive player is to stop the basketball. Instead of doing that, she trailed. None of her teammates came over. And there you look at the wrist. Wrist got hit. Yep. It was enough to displace the shot, per se. And a pair of free throws here for Macy Camito. Elsie Larson will check in. She had one made three-point bucket in half number one. So back to double digits, this lead. Pro Skills trailed 20 to 15 after the first, but were outscored 20 to 10 in that second quarter. Got it down to seven here in the third quarter, but now it's up to 11 the lead. Right now the only negative from this game for all yeah. Iowa, free throw shooting. Three by oh. Cavan, or Cavan almost banked home. One and done though again for pro skills. And again just beat him down the floor. Yep. Larson, nobody ever stopped the ball. And the lead back to 13 and a timeout yeah. called by pro skills and pro skills now is down to one timeout for the remainder of the game. But again, and if you're down by double digits, those timeouts don't do you much good. Yeah, we look at the huddle. Ryan Hahn's been coaching basketball for over 10 years at the high school, college, and AAU levels, the head coach of all Iowa attack. He started his own AAU club. Uh, it was called the Truth Basketball Club in the August 2012 when he lived in Wheaton, Illinois, and uh, has done just a wonderful job here developing. He sent nearly two dozen female athletes uh, off to college basketball and join the All-Iowa Attack in 2021. I really like how the young man coaches, and uh, even though I call him a young man, he started in 2012, but uh, to me, he's a young man. We got our courtside position alongside Pete Smith, Greg Rakestraw with you. Thank you so much to our ISC Sports Network crew. Thank you to Jordan Shue, Alan Hughes, and the rest of our Memphis-based team that are 
put together these broadcasts for you both last Thursday for the boys' championships and now today for the girls' championships. And one more to go at 11 o'clock local time. It'll be the 10th grade game. Again, all Iowa attack in that one as well. Tartan North, their opponent out of Minnesota. Full court pickup here out of the timeout. Back by up. All oh, Iowa back up, back up. There we go. Nice read. Should have a layup or two on one. Minor. Oh, we had the two on one. And right idea. Jackson couldn't Just catch it. Couldn't complete the pass. Yeah. Lauer out of there with it. Spot up three by Miller. Not that time. And Caven will track down the loose ball. Skip it. Okay, don't. Again, Iowa now not guarding the basketball. But when you got a rim protector there, right. you don't have to. This play in center field is Mueller. Again, Larson runs the floor off the square. Got it. Nice catch and score by Larson. Larson was seven. Larson did not score in yesterday's semifinal. Prestridge got into Mueller, got the foul, and Prestridge, who has three, will shoot two points here. That Prestridge does a good job, partner. You just said it. She got into Mueller there, and Mueller <laughs> wasn't trying to foul, but it's like, what am I supposed to do? Well, give credit Prestridge a good job of basketball sense and IQ there. You mentioned that early in the game. A lot of great basketball IQ for as young as these ladies are and Iowa has been the better of the two using that IQ in this game. It is a 12-5 run after it got down to a seven-point game, and that timeout was taken by Coach Hahn of All-Iowa Attack. Now the lead has been stretched back to briefly 15 and currently sitting on 14. Prestridge makes them both. She is three of five, three of four rather from the line today, and she has five points. Yeah, Pro Skills needs to get a stop here. See if they can get this back to double digits before, or single digits. Camino, oh. her first three, she's got seven. Great pin down by Grace Fincham on the screen to get her open, too. Fifth different player to make a three. Mueller got some ball, but got some arm as well. Largest lead for all Iowa's at 16, but free throws coming for Pro Skills of Texas. That's the fourth foul on Mueller. Here's Miner. Miner has made all five free throws she has attempted so far today. Yeah, they've done the better job at the free throw line, pro skills overall, but Iowa Attack has been attacking as their name refers to. Elizabeth Pittman will enter for the first time for pro skills. She is a six foot four freshman to be from Prosper High School in Prosper, Texas. Podcaster Jinx we applied jinxed to DeAndra, <laughs> I apologize. I was thinking the same Once thing. Once you've made your first five, I think you're impervious to that. 15-point game. And just four-out offense. Mueller, the lone kind of post player, waits for the ball to find her. Nice pass Immediately out. finds yeah. a teammate. Baseline corner three does not go, but White will track down the loose ball for all Iowa. And then she goes, wait oh. a minute. There's 6-4 <laughs> in front of me, but she is not deterred. White. She's got seven. Boy, took the contact and finished. See what, what great balance for Iowa. No player has more than 14. Pittman could not track it down. And I'm not sure there's an answer at this point for pro skills. Yeah, bad angle there on the pass. Good idea to make the pass, don't get me wrong, but should have dribbled over that right wing. Didn't really give Pittman much of a chance. There you take a look at Elizabeth Pittman. 6-4, rising freshman. Almost a double dribble by Camito. Good job by Prestridge to play the passing lane. He does a great job. That's one of her skills. There's a hold on the floor. Yeah, Camito gave the, foul. the shot. Yeah, they're going to say it's on the shot, I think. Yep. Yep, she did get the shot up. She Two tickled. free throws coming up here for Jasmine Bailey. We saw a lot of Jasmine early in the game. She's been kind of quiet right. ever since that first quarter. Adriana Drake checking back in. Along with Iowa's Avery Lauer. She's from North Liberty just outside of Iowa City. Lauer's been a big key tonight. She has 14 points. And when I say tonight, it seems like night for me because it's a championship ball game. But we are playing in the morning here in Memphis, Tennessee in the Memphis Sports and Events Center. Beautiful facility. Air ball gives uh, Pro Skills a chance to put a man-to-man -man press on on the inbounds. 
And part of the reason why we're playing in the morning is that way players can you right. know, fly home after having been here for the last five days. This is their travel day. And baseball determined that should be a getaway day. Camito will pull from the free throw line and score it. Boy, what a possession. Just dominated the whole possession. Ran some clock down to get it under a minute to go here, and nice job. Yeah, the sands of the hourglass in favor of all Iowa at this point. And there was a foul given, an intentional, intentional yeah. foul. And I think it must have been against all Iowa. Must have been somebody kind of in the wash, must have dealt out an elbow kind of on the way back. That's an intentional foul. I think it's on Mueller. Yep. Ellie Mueller. So you can see her in the background kind of shaking her head. I needed a, I needed a minute off. <laughs> well, Prestridge misses. I think that's Mueller's fourth, I believe. And they will get her out as Fincham will come to replace her. Uh, can't Prestridge capitalize. misses them both. They will get the basketball back. They'll have the last shot if they want. If they can. Coach Earl Rooks, assisted by Lindsey Huey. Coaching the Pro Seal squad. So nine and a half seconds up to go before we get to the so end of the quarter break. Yep, I was going to give them a three to the end. Corner. Prestridge. No. Weak side glass and couldn't be controlled by Borders in time. So after a flourish at the beginning of the quarter by Pro Skills. All Iowa has, again, established a significant lead. It is 18 going to the fourth quarter as you're watching on USA Basketball and YouTube. All-time leading FIBA World Cup. Diana Taurasi? Uh, Diana Taurasi. Lisa Leslie? Yes. Diana? Lisa. Oh, that was going to be my second one. Lisa Leslie. Yeah! Is it a guard or a post? Lisa Leslie? Yes. Yo! Yeah. Let's go. World Cup, Diana. Sue. Yes. Yes. Okay. Brianna Stewart. Sue. Oh, uh, okay. I mean, either Sue or Stewie. Sue, Birdie. Sue and DT have the most like gold medals, right? Sue. Yes. Ah! Yes. Me? We know it's Diana, we know it's Sue, we know it's Stewie. How many more UConn players? <laughs> Swing cast. Asia Jones. Cynthia Cooper. Tamika Ketchins. Cheryl Swoops. Brittany Greiner. Aja. Maya Moore. Kara there Walters. There it is. Yes. Greg Rextra, Pete Smith back with you here on USA Basketball and YouTube. 59-41, all Iowa attack. Again, they have led by double digits for most of the way, not all of it. Lee was as small as seven for a possession early in the third quarter, but simply too many made shots by all Iowa. They've been really solid in terms of their floor spacing and movement. And they will take an 18-point lead into the final eight minutes, looking to close out the ninth grade U.S. Open Championship. They will be patient, probably get the ball to Mueller a lot. Mueller set a great screen there, and Prestridge ran right through it. Now... Let's see, yep, that's going to be a blocking squat, blocking foul. Oh, they did call the block. It goes against Mueller, yep. Boy, okay. I, yep. I, I thought Mueller was doing a pretty good job. But credit Prestridge for fighting hard through that screen. I thought it was going to be called the other way. Not disagreeing with the call, I just didn't, couldn't quite see how uh, late, I guess, Mueller was setting that screen. One, One two, two, two trap two. here by yep. All Iowa. Prestridge misses. Rebound momentarily in the hands of Pro Skills, but all Iowa has just been a little quicker to almost every loose ball today. You just said, I was just thinking, Pro Skills just seems a little flat footed. Even right there, Prestridge had a good shot, just didn't go up strong with it. Finley left that one short from 16 feet. Simmons, three, no. 
Caven the rebound. She's fouled by Finley. Use the left hand there. She's going to draw, draw a foul and shoot a pair of free throws here. Every time the clock stops, it gives Pro Skills a little bit of an opportunity to gather themselves, maybe get in this press here as you see the offensive rebound by Caven. There's the contact there by Finley, who's done a wonderful job defensively. We haven't called her name a lot in the second half, but first half she set the tone. She's going to take a little break here as Grace Fincham, Fincham checks back in, who's been awesome off the bench for this IC West team. Actually, she started. Ooh. And oh, that'll now, be a foul again on Mueller. It's going to be on Mueller. She's a little awkward, but she, she had that the arm bar up there, Greg. That one I did see pretty well. Almost could have been called flagrant, quite frankly, in some ways, if you didn't know her. <laughs> so Finley will come right back in. Mueller's now got four fouls. I think I said she had four there. I want to apologize. Yeah. There yes, was you, yep. confusion as to what was her fourth foul, but the fourth foul of the quarter, so I apologize for that. But now she's got four unquestionably, and she'll sit for a while. This will give Pro Skills a little bit of a window here because she's been so dumb. There's the foul. Every time the clock stops, it's going to help Pro Skills. But Mueller on the bench there. She's been a one-person rebounding machine pretty much for Iowa. A few offensive rebounds by the AIA squad, but overall Mueller's been a great on the board. Let's see if that changes the game still with almost seven minutes to go. Left it short. And pro skills has been better from the line than, say, all Iowa has been, but... When you are trying to recover from a 17-point deficit, you cannot leave points on the table. And missed them both. Yeah, good block out there. And again, you should see if, if the rebound advantage is the same without Mueller on the floor. Fincham did her job there. Run and jump defense in the half court. Pro Skills tried. And Camito said, no problem. Yeah. I'll go right to the glass. Well, she did a great job of backing away from the pressure. Then she could split that trap. And then she had a pretty nice path to the basket. Camito with nine so far in this game. She's got a really nice release at the top of her shot. Her shot pocket looks really good. Third different player in double figures for this all-Iowa attack squad. Check Lowers her. got 14, did most of her damage in the first half. Fincham with 11, and Camito joins her with 11. And the lead expands to 19. And Iowa will let them shoot threes as long as it's contested the rest of this game. Prestridge, a two. And again, inside position by White. Lauer will push. And good job by yeah. Precious, held her ground. I like how she plays. She's a smart player. Caven draws the foul. Yeah. So Finley, and already into the bonus for pro skills for the remainder of the game. Yeah, Coach Hahn knows that. He's not real thrilled about that, as you can tell. A pair of free throws here by Caven. And on Finley, I think that's her fifth foul, yep. Well, she's she's done a whale of a job defensively as he checks out. She set the tone defensively for this all-Iowa attack in the first half. But she will be disqualified here for the rest of the game with five fouls. And you've got Mueller with four fouls on the bench. So Iowa, two of their starters really battling foul trouble, one lost. In other words, you may have a need to kind of shorten the game a little bit here if you're all Iowa attack. Right. Elongate some possessions. You may see a little more passive zone because of that. Well, you should have enough points. You've got 61 points on the board right now. So far for pro skills, they scored 15 in the first, 10 in the second, 16 in the third. So they've not put up a 19 or 20 point quarter yet. So the potential's there. As you said, Iowa needs to take care of the ball and run some clock off. Caven now with 10. She joins <laughs> Jackson as the high point player. And like I said, let's, uh, let's well, get in transition you just can, score layup. You can talk about <laughs> slowing the game down. You're not turning down a layup, no. which is what White just had. No. She's got nine. 
Long two is good. Good looking jump shot by Bailey. I think part of the story for, for pro skills is the fact that again, Bailey kind of disappeared for a couple of quarters. Right, right. And again, there's a drive to the basket and score it. That's Camito. And then Camito hustling back, tipped that ball away. Camito's got 13. Well, well, and judging by this team, and well, the next one we will see, girls' high school basketball is very healthy in Iowa for the next few years. They got some significant talent in that state. They they know how to play. They're building on that Hawkeye success in the NCAA tournament too, no doubt about it. But it's it's just been a great state. You referenced early in the game that you know they started playing six on six in Iowa, and when they went to five on five, it took them a little bit of time to get the concept coming from high school basketball, but they got it now, Greg. Ball pokes away. White. Now Couldn't it's slipping it away. Down, yeah. but left hand no, but run the floor, get rewarded. That's Lauer. She's got 16. And all of a sudden, it is a 24-point game. And this is starting to turn into a bit of open gym at this point. Yeah. Borders will get the foul and shoot two. And and that's the only concern right now for all Iowa attack. And with the 24-point lead, I'm not sure how big of a concern it is. But they can, you know, kind of rack up fouls. That's yeah. that's about it. Kennedy Borders is a 5'8 swing guard out of Plano East High School, suburb of Dallas. And that is her first miss at the line. She has yet to score. I was getting ready to say that is her first point if it fell in, but it did not. Amaya McDonald about to check in now for pro skills. They'll go a little bit deeper to their bench. And this is the seventh game in the last four days for each of these two teams. Borders connects. So she becomes the eighth player to score for pro skills. Only McDonald who just checked in and Pittman have yet to break the scoring column for pro skills. And Camito, good take, just didn't finish. Good crash by Fincham. It is out of bounds to all Iowa. And this has been a team that has been a really good three-point shooting team, but threes may be off into the closing seconds of the shot clock. It may be all layup time for all eyes. There's Iowa. a layup right there. Yep, nice out-of-bounds play. Missed it, but had a layup. Can't get a better shot than that. So under five to play. And the pull-up yeah. is good by Simmons. Her first field goal, she's got three points. You don't want to stop playing defense if you're Iowa, but... No need to foul right now. Oh, there's a travel, got away with it. Fincham lines it up, missed it. Lauer, good hustle. Wing three, no. Again, Lauer, the hustle points and gets rewarded. Yeah, getting the 50-50 balls. What is it our friend likes to say? The game rewards toughness. Right. That'd be the comment of your former assistant coach, Brad Stevens. He's got a job in the NBA somewhere, and there is a foul, a moving screen going to be called against Pro Skills. Of course, he'd be the president of the Boston Celtics. Oh, Brad Stevens, yeah. yeah, I re yeah. Remember, remember him? him. Yeah. 20, just out of DePaul University, 22-year-old guy. Yeah. Helped with scouting reports back <laughs> in the day. Back in the day. Volunteer assistant for me one year at Carmel High School in Indiana before he went on to bigger and better things at Butler University. See, you've now got, you know, uh, competing, you know, biographical information. You know, are you Rick Fox's JV coach or are you Brad <laughs> Stevens' mentor from his high school days? We'll finish that story in a moment. Low block, Mueller gets the shot to go. She's got seven. Again, her focus has been defense and rebounding, but obviously all things clicking right now for all Iowa. This is the most points they have scored in a game in the seven so far in the tournament. Well, quite frankly, they should be in the 80s if they knock their free throws down at a higher rate. <laughs> Uh, and, and she has been, it's been her Achilles tendon, but she has really done a great job rebounding and can, being a, poor, a post force inside. You can kind of look at the bench with a sheepish grin when you're up yeah. by 25 when you airball a yeah. free throw. She attends Dowling Catholic High School. We've referenced the Caitlin Clark effect. That's where Caitlin went to high school. So Dowling Catholic grad, Boom. pull up by Bailey is good. She's got 11. Yeah, but you hit a big key here. She went quite quiet, Jasmine Bailey, in that second quarter. And that's when her team got outscored 20 to 10. She's a good player. Bailey, the third player in double figures for pro skills. Shot clock won't be a factor. Foul is called. That's the fourth team foul against pro skills. So no free throws coming up here yet. Shot clock will reset to 20. Prestridge now will come back in. 
for Pro Skills. And we are on track for an 11 o'clock local time start for our 10th grade championship between all Iowa There's a hold. <laughs> and Tartan North. And that'll be two shots on the hold against Kennedy Borders. Yep, just a little back cut. Romney Cote from West Des Moines High or West Des Moines, Iowa. Waukee High School, Waukee Northwest, makes the first free throw. She's on the board for the first time. And every all Iowa attack player now has scored that is dressed. Words of Mark Boyle, nine of dressed, nine have scored. Mark be the radio voice of the Indiana Pacers for not familiar with his work for the last 30 years. Got them both. And with the Mark Boyle and Brad Stevens <laughs> reference, you can figure out where the announcers <laughs> are from today. 75-50 with 3.30 left to go. The slip blocked by Mueller, but Mueller called for a foul. And that'll be her fifth, I believe. And that is five. Yeah. Yep. So Fincham will come in to replace her. Mueller's day is done. She'll exit with yep. seven points. She did a great job. She's working the free throws a little bit, but she, clearly she's got some skills that are ones you don't teach. And she clearly has a Division I future a couple of years down the road. Oh, she keeps the ball up high on her defensive rebound. She's good on outlet passes. She right now just, and it could have been just a, a tough day at the line for her, but, but she gets a lot of post touches. She's got to knock in those free throws. And, her value as a player for her team is really going to go up. McDonald misses a boat. Prestridge at inside position. Then simply lost the basketball. Here's Trishelle Miller. It is largely a game to keep away at this point for all Iowa. And shot clock still on. So try to use as much of that 30 as possible. Fincham lets it fly, misses <laughs> everything. Croat will track it down. Gonna call push. Yeah, oh, shot, shot clock, clock didn't reset properly. Okay. I saw our hands go up the official. Adriana Drake will check back in for Pro Skills. Pro Skills lost their opening game to the Miami Suns in this tournament by 23, then beat that same Miami team in the round of 16 to make it here. In 2014, start of the week, 16 made the Stars bracket. That is the championship bracket. You hear the countdown. Miller's shot has to go up. Doesn't matter. That yep. will play on. Long three. No. Miller tied up by McDonald. And the jump ball will keep it here to Pro Skills. I think it's fitting this. All Iowa attack team has unity on the back of their jerseys because they have played very, very well together. When they've needed buckets, they've executed some nice backdoor cuts and plays. As you take a look at Earl Rooks, has to be proud of his team. They'll finish five and two for the week. Just kind of ran out of gas. A bad second quarter got them down, and they just don't have the the uh, enough in the tank right now to make a comeback here. The third quarter they tried. They got it down to seven, as I remember, Greg, in the third quarter, but it's ballooned out at 25, and no one scored here in the last minute. Prestridge just stepped through, just couldn't finish. Tried to finish with the right instead of the left. Tries the left <laughs> that time. Trying both hands. Goes 0 for 2. <laughs> She shakes her a little bit. And again, it's been a frustrating day for her, but she has played awfully hard. Oh, and she's a, she's she's a very really heavy impressive. player. Yep. Made a couple steals on weak side passes or on uh, ball entry passes. She's made a couple steals. Smart player, just not a good shooting night or afternoon or morning, I should say, whatever it is this morning. The pull. Oh, yeah. Gets the roll <laughs> by Kennedy Borders, her first field goal. That's the most athletic play we've seen her make. She. Quick to the ball that time. Great first step. We will have a brief breather between games. Again, 11 o'clock Central time will be when our 10th grade championship game will start. Three by Miller. Got it. Wow, nice offensive rotation there. Moving her the second basketball. second bucket of the game. Both have been from three-point range. She's got offers from Colorado State, South Dakota, and Drake does Miller. 
I'm going to put you on the spot because I've spent time in the Dakotas calling college basketball, and some of the nicknames out there have unique pronunciations. So if she attends school at the University of South Dakota, she'll play for what team in terms of a mascot? Gosh. They used to be the fight. No, that was the fight. North Dakota. That's North Dakota. That's North Dakota, yeah. Those are fighting words in South Dakota. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, let me think. Simmons connects from the free throw line. Well, they. Vinny Terry went to school there, right? No, he went to South Dakota State. That's, that's also Jack fighting Rabbits. words. Those are Jack Rabbits. Okay, yes. so I'm trying. I'm yeah. pulling out every kind I, of. I may stop you before you tick anybody else off. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> She's gonna, if she goes to South Dakota, she play for the Coyotes, not the Coyotes. The Coyotes. The Coyotes. Thank is how you. they say it in Vermilion, South Dakota. Ooh, traveled. Yep. Yeah, steps goal. Yep. Coyotes. Well, I remember when they used to be Division II schools. Now they're playing at a good, good level, right. Division I. As someone that was in the Summit League when those schools started to join, they elevated that league big time to those eventually four schools. Shot missed by Cavid, put back by Pittman. Eventually, it's Simmons that scores, and Simmons now a six. Again, it is simply a matter of the final margin at this point with 90 seconds to play. Well, at least in this game, the better team definitely won. But when I say that, Iowa's just done so many good things in this contest, from defensive rebounding to three-point shooting. The one thing they haven't done well is shoot free throws, but they got so many attempts. They got enough made that it helped. And there's a three-point play opportunity for count Patience the, Simmons. Count the basket by Simmons. She has eight and a chance to get nine. There will be a brief medal and trophy presentation ceremony at the conclusion of this game. Thank all of you joining us on USA Basketball's YouTube channel. One more game left to go. Simmons with nine. And teams from all across the country a part of this event. You had to qualify to be in this event. These are the best of the best, and clearly all Iowa attack has played like that. Drake will give the foul. And free throws coming up for Tylee White. Yeah, they'll play all the way to about 1 o'clock this afternoon. There'll be games on other courts for placings in this tournament and just making sure teams get the same amount of games and opportunities. And pretty much just wraps up the basketball season for uh, summer basketball for high school kids as fall sports will start in many states. They, they have in the state of Indiana already. Girls golf started last week. I know uh, the Indiana team here lost one of their better players here earlier in the week to get ready for a defense of their state stock soccer championship in Indiana. So multi-sport athletes here also. It's a line driver. Fincham, the rebound. Okay, putting up 79 and possibly in the 80 points here if they get a shot off. That's a lot of points. Yes, it is. It's <laughs> a lot of points. I'll tell you, the two boys' championships games that we did, they weren't that close to... They were not even that close to scoring that many points ever. There's White 81. will take the open layup, and she has 12. She is one of four players in double figures for all Iowa attack. Drake turns it down. Pittman, they're going to call an offensive foul. It was kind of a <laughs> delayed reaction foul, but it was the right call. She well, I love the idea if she wanted yeah. to get to the rim again. This young girl, I don't think, did you say she hasn't played high school basketball yet, has she? Correct. So Elizabeth Pittman, I love her aggressiveness, but she led with that elbow way too much. Thank you. So into the front court, no further shot required. Your champions of the ninth grade division, all Iowa attack, and they led by double figures really from early in the second quarter all the way down to the wire. It was never close in quarter number four. They win this with 81 to 58. Pete, your final thoughts on this one. Iowa played very well team-wise. All Iowa attacked, they tacked the rim. They were the better team today. Great shooters, nice job by Coach Ryan Hahn and assisted by Dixon Jensen. And Coach Jensen's gonna coach this next game for the all Iowa attack. So great contest, finish the week six and one. Yeah, basically the head coach and assistant coach switch roles for our next game. Your champions of the ninth grade division, all Iowa attack. It was all Iowa certainly 
in this game. We'll take a brief timeout. We'll come back with a special guest that will join us before we get to our 10th grade championship game featuring teams comprised of players primarily from Iowa and Minnesota. Back with more in a moment as you're watching the U.S. Open Championships, ninth and then 10th grade divisions here on USA Basketball and YouTube. Coach came yesterday when we interviewed him. He was so impressed because he said, you didn't have to be here. You don't need to be here. So why are you here? I actually enjoy playing basketball, being around my peers and knowing that they're going to bring the best out of me, I bring the best out of them. You know, for me, that's what it's all about, just having that, having that joy. Trying to add to the 11 -0 run. Carmelo for three. How about that? What a big shot. I went four years for this battle. We used to put American basketball back when it was supposed to be. On top. Anthony has to put it up. That's good. A three-pointer on a broken play. Big Lee Muhau in front of him. No chance for Lee. He's one of the great scorers in international history. Had him exactly where he wanted him. It hasn't really sunk into me yet that, you know, this is four Olympics for me and having a chance to win three gold medals. It's not sinking in right now. Maybe after the fact, maybe years down the line when I sit back and kind of recap kind of my life and my career, it'll sink into me. Well, we are back between contests. There you see the team from Minnesota in North Tartan that's about to take to the floor. They will take on again the 10th grade version of this all-Iowa attack team, and we'll put six minutes on the clock, and then we'll get things started for our 10th grade championship. Between now and then, we are thrilled to be joined by Jay Demings, who is the Youth and Sport Director for USA Basketball. Jay, thank you so much for joining us, and this wraps up eight busy days of gameplay. Obviously, many more weeks and months of preparation to get here. What's this like for you and the crew to see this come to a finale today here in Memphis? Well, first of all, thanks, Greg. Thanks for having me on. I think um, it's kind of a bittersweet day. I mean, we, we put a lot of work and time and energy, not only USA Basketball, but the NCAA and all of their crew. And to see it coming to an end, it's uh, in, in one way probably a relief for a lot of staff, <laughs> but another way, I, you know, we really enjoy seeing kids have a great time. There are so many top flight AAU events, circuits, et cetera, around the country. Why is it important for USA Basketball to play a role in this event? Yeah, and I think that's an important word, playing a role. You know, we don't pretend to, to know everything about the, you know, the, the youth level, and, and we're trying to provide, an, uh, you know, raise some standards in the game. Um, but really, the people that are operating every day when we're not operating, so the other 360 days a year, are the ones that truly develop basketball in the United States. So we're just hoping to bring a little something to give back and, and do our part to keep you know, the United States on top. There are so many events that you guys have your hands as a part of. Another one that we have a privilege to, to kind of bring you, at least to the USA Basketball YouTube channel, is the 3X event, or the 3X3 event. Uh, last year in Springfield, Massachusetts. This spring was in Colorado Springs. That is obviously such a growing facet of this sport. It's like to be a part of that on a regular basis. Yeah, that 3x3, you know, internationally and globally has been taking off. It's just now starting to take off here in the United States. I think you're going to see a huge development in the next five years. We brought our 3x3 U17 national team trials to this event, and um, uh, the, we had to have crowd control around, so everybody <laughs> got to see it. Um, so it was great for those girls to be able to try out in that environment, but I also think it's great for that discipline of basketball to be able to get um, elevated in this kind of environment as well. The highlights that we're showing here, again, a lot of the men's players are guys that have been pros. Jimmer Fredette, obviously one of those that comes to mind. On the women's side of things, because kind of the time that it works, and you know, you've got the WNBA, so a lot of college teams participate in that. Let's think about things from a youth perspective. What other, what's kind of the next big event for you on the calendar now that you're through this event here in Memphis? Yeah, so on uh, the 3X3 side, it's going to be the U18 World Cup that they'll go and compete in Deberson, Hungary at the end of August. Uh, the 3X3 U17 uh, Zone Championships, or what we call the America Cup, will be coming up. But our youth division has more than just tournaments. We have coaching clinics. We have uh, open gym programs. We have uh, you know, true youth clinics. We have 
uh, women's programs, women women in the game conferences that we operate every year. So, um, and then we have regional camps. So developing the next level of player, not just for national teams, but for their own personal development as they go on to middle school, high school, and eventually college. But um, you know, we're excited. So we're just about halfway through our season right now. We we operate basketball when the winter basketball season's not in operation. Um, so we're excited to do that, and, and we're looking forward to a great rest of the summer. All right, social media and or a website to find out more about what USA Basketball does at all levels of the game. What's the best way to go about doing so? The easiest way, new revamped website, usab.com. Our media team does a great job. You can navigate on there. Uh, there's opportunities to play with USA Basketball. There's opportunities to volunteer with USA Basketball. We're always looking for great people to help elevate the sport. Um, so you can volunteer on our website. We're always looking for great volunteers. Um, but get involved in our programming. We think our programming is um, you know, going to be our calling card. We're probably known for our national team sure, five on course. five programs. But I think in, in, in the future, it's a way for people to get uh, it's just more inclusive. It's a way for more people to be involved with, uh, with the national governing body. Jay, thank you so much for having us. Thanks, and enjoy Craig. this final coming up. Thank you so much. Jay Demings of USA Basketball kind of to join us. We'll take this very quick time out because we've got a 10th grade champs to bring you. It is Tartan North of Minnesota against all Iowa Attack. And it comes your way next on USA Basketball and YouTube. At the 2023 U.S. Open Basketball Championships, we had more than 60 teams from across 18 different states, and that included a division for the National Wheelchair Basketball Association. We were really happy to include that group as well. The purpose of this event is to bring the national governing body standards to the tournament space. And so USA Basketball puts on an event that's run by our guidelines and standards, which really are emphasizing fun and development. Welcome inside the Memphis Sports and Events Center. It is now time for our 10th grade championship game. Our finals of the finals, if you will, here for this U.S. Open of the Women's Division. It is North Tartan, Minnesota, against All Iowa Attack. That's All Iowa on your screen. Greg Rakestraw, Pete Smith with you. And again, as we get a year older, we've got kind of a year more of, of high school stats to share with you, a year more of the recruiting trail. And these two teams are absolutely loaded. Here's the starting five for all Iowa. Jordan Spicer, Journey Houston, Devine Burridge, Libby Fandel, and Ava Zedeker is committed to play at Creighton a couple of years from now. On the flip side for North Tartan of Minnesota, Gerard Corey is the head coach. Rainey Wilson, Hadley Toole, Aaliyah Crump, Madden Greenway. We'll talk a lot about her and Jaden Hale, the starting five for North Tartan. Pete, your final thoughts where this one goes live. Well, this is our last game championship-wise of the summer, and that being said, it should be a great one. I was talking to North Tartan's coaches, and uh, this team, they played together for a long time, and they would like to end it with a victory like, obviously, all Iowa attack would. But this, this should be a really good one. Talking to everyone, the, the aspects and the uh, expectation of this game, let's see if it lives up to its billing. North Tartan in the Navy Blue, all Iowa attack in the red. We are underway. Thanks for joining us, USA Basketball on YouTube. If you're warm with us for the previous game, high school link game in terms of four eight minute quarters, but most of the rules are that of the college variety. It's an 84 foot floor, we'll play the college three point line. No such thing as the one plus the bonus. Spot up three, does not go. Shot taken and missed for. All Iowa by Libby Fandel. Jaden Hale with a nice block out to let that ball go out of bounds here. This will be a much more physical game than our ninth grade game per se. Well, Fandel that just 
missed the three and knocked that ball out of bounds. She had 22 points yesterday for all Iowa Tech. She made six threes in the semifinal win against Boo Williams. Run and jump defense to start the first defensive possession. Almost caused a turnover there. North Charton almost out of bounds. On the drive, this is Aaliyah Crump. She played with the U16 national team this summer. Three is missed, but it goes right in the hands of Hadley Toole from Alexandria, Minnesota. He is six foot two, listed as a shooting guard. The runner does not go. Toole the rebound. Toole did not score in yesterday's win for North Tartan. Crump's wow. three is good. Aaliyah Crump. And we'll talk a great deal about her. She had 18 points in the semifinal yesterday. Three missed. Rebound is thrown off the All-Iowa attack player. Devine Burridge couldn't hang on to it. So it'll be North Tartan ball. Yeah, they got it right. Yep. Yep. A good start for North Tartan. Players change for All-Iowa attack. Coaches remain the same. They simply kick down to the other end. Dixon Jensen serves as the head coach with Ryan Hahn as the assistant here at the 10th grade level. Oh, good back cut. Good, opens up a pick and roll opportunity. Refuses the screen, shoots a three way short. That misses from Rainey Wilson from Hortonville, Wisconsin. Trailer three for Spicer, got it. Spicer playing from the St. Louis area. Attends Lutheran High School. She was offered by Iowa last summer amongst others. Again, these two teams will not exactly let the grass go to the tires. They will get up and down the floor, and this will be a parade of the three-point line. Spicer, her team, state champs in class five in Missouri this year. Here's Zedeker on the drive, got fouled. And Ava Zedeker, who attends Dowling Catholic High School. So Mueller from the ninth grade go, game. Yep. Zedeker from the 10th grade game were teammates at Dowling Catholic this year. Zedeker will shoot two, and again, while it's not assigned national letter of intent, Zedeker, one of the few players, like the only player in this game that has made a verbal commitment at this point, she's had in Creighton in two years. Dowling Catholic's had a pretty good player in the past there, too, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah she's, she's pretty decent. I mean, Caitlin Clark. Makes the second. So 5-4 is our score in favor of North Tartan. Step through. Nowhere to go for Hale. Yeah, she should have drop step instead of forward pivot. Crump from the elbow. She's got five. Two or three so far shooting, and she's really been aggressive both at the defensive end and offensive end. Burridge misses. And the rebound pulled down by Madden Greenway. The smallest player on the floor. But a most <laughs> potent of scores. She has 2,000 career points in high school. She's going to be a sophomore next year. <laughs> Gosh. She played as both a seventh and an eighth grader at the high school varsity level. You can do that in Minnesota. Ball tipped out of bounds. It'll be North Tartan. And if you're a fan of the National Football League, Minnesota, Greenway, yes, her dad is Chad that played 11 years the Minnesota Vikings. So 9 4 for North Tartan. 2 3 zone. Now by All Iowa Attack. Deep three, Greenway. And Left a dent in the backboard on that one. Well, Rebound good. by Journey Houston. A good test by, uh, good contest by Devine. Trailer three for all Iowa is good. Libby Fandel. Again, she made six of those yesterday. She's been offered by Marquette, BYU, Murray State, and Illinois State. And I think I see Illinois State across the way watching her play in this game. Three, Crump. Yes. Her second made three. She's got eight. She's off to a great start. Whoa, another three at the other end. Good. And that's what this game's going to be. Spicer's made two. All three made field goals so far for all Iowa. Attack have all been from 22 feet away. That'll be a foul that goes against Journey Houston. So one foul on each team here in the first three minutes and 40 seconds. And we get a chance to talk to one of the coaches that had to play against this all Iowa attack team. And his summation was pretty simple. They shot the lights out against us. Yeah, that, that being Indiana lead veteran coach Tony Marlin, who, whose team had a nice tournament here. And uh, he said, boy, the Iowa just can really shoot. We have seen that in the early going here already. This is Rainey Wilson. 
Now Tool against that zone, finds a soft spot. Good look that wouldn't go. Hale and charge back up the loose change. No, Wilson and one. Hard to sometimes block out of a 2-3 zone, Greg, especially when you get the ball to the middle like they did. Even though she missed the shot, that really sucked everybody in. As you take a look here, Tool missed the first shot. There's the second shot, rebound put up by Wilson, and Rainey's going to shoot a free throw here. Rainey has scored 971 points in her first years of high school basketball. Led her team to the state semifinals in Wisconsin this past year. So the old-fashioned three-point play to push North Tartan back to a five-point lead. Good patience on the offensive end. Even though it's five out there moving and cutting really hard, setting some brush screens. Zedeker. Crump, great defensive yep. contest at the rim. Greenway. Oh, bad choice, bad choice there. Again, tried to, to yeah. reward the big, and unfortunately, that leads to Zedeker getting, well, let's take an open look, but North Tartan recovered quickly. Spicer will not pass up the look from 22. Left it short. Tool will track it down. And now Greenway distributes, and the bucket for Wilson. Better Wilson choice that time by Madden. Better choice. Last time she had two guys, two players on that right wing trying to force the pass. A seven-point lead for North Tartan. That's going to be a foul. The aggressive take by Libby Fandel. Sure was. The two coming up. Defensively, Wilson tried to get back and not foul, and she just was in no man's land, as you see. Dixon Jensen, the head coach of this Iowa all Iowa attack team is first one goes down. Pete, one of the things I like to talk about is players playing multiple sports. Fandel is a three sport high school athlete. She plays volleyball and she qualified for the state track and field finals in the high jump this year. Okay, looking at that body frame, I bet you she can get up and it looks like she's pretty agile too. So that's a big attribute to a high jumper, that's for sure. Two three zones still by all Iowa. Five minutes in, five point lead for the team from Minnesota. Short. Catch and shoot three does not go. Fight for the loose ball. Fandel will track it down. That was Tori Schlegel that just checked in for North Tartan that let it fly. She's from Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Well, that's a basketball hotbed, Eden Prairie. That's that's a sports <laughs> hotbed, period. Nice movement. Block. Yep, way down inside the circle there. Nice movement. All the defense moved in one way. Jordan Spicer saw the parting the C per se defensively, took advantage of it, and got to the rim. So Spicer will have a chance to shoot. Maya Crawford, Ashlyn Koopel, both in the contest for all Iowa. Yeah, I kind of I like this, Greg. Both teams really going deep in their bench here early in the first quarter. So they all have some comfort play when they get in later on in the game. They've already been in there. Got a sweat going a little bit, in the flow a little bit. Spicer has offers, you mentioned Iowa. His offers from Iowa State, Vandy, West Virginia, amongst others. All of these players but one for all Iowa will be high school juniors next year. Koopel, who is from South Dakota, will be just a sophomore next year. 2-3 zone here for all Iowa. Crawford applying the ball pressure. Wing shot does not go, but again, there's Hale at inside position, and if nothing else, yeah. gets the ball back. Hale from Fargo, North Dakota. She slid in there real well on the offensive rebound to get inside position. Again, a zone, they're standing. You can do that. Hale had a nice post up, didn't get it. Skip pass, three in the corner, got it. Bucket made by Wilson, she's got eight. She had 41 in the state quarterfinal in Wisconsin back in March. Spicer, Boy, that's she, like a free throw for her from that spot, that's she, 24 feet away. That strong, powerful legs on that jump shot. She just explodes up off that floor. Catch and shoot three by Aaliyah Crump. Uh, I like she's her She's got game. 11. 
She just made a great assist on the possession before. Catch and shoot right there because she's wide open on that wing. And she qualified for the U16 national team that played back in June. So this is her second USA basketball event of the summer. Three on the <laughs> wing is good. That's Ashlyn Koopel. Wagner, South Dakota. Turn by Hale is good. Jaden Hale gets the bucket. She's the fifth different player for North Tartan to collect. And this may be first to 100. And I'm not sure that's going to be enough to win it. That three does not go, but Crawford tracks down the loose rebound. Zedeker lets fire. That does not go. Spicer will try to keep the possession alive and does. And then she has it poked away. We'll keep it right here. I love how Spicer pulled that ball back. She could hear the North Tartan players pursuing her. He was like a pullback dribble to, to keep possession of it, and North Tartan knocked it out of bounds. Love the pace of play here. Both teams going up and down. And there's defense being played. Don't, don't think there isn't. It's just a lot of good shot making right now and shot selection. Mandel on the drive. Score it. She's got seven. She is from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Xavier High School. They were the state champs in 2022 when she was a freshman. Deep three, Wilson does not go. Long shot, long rebound, tough to rebound. Long two, no, for Tori Schlegel. Spicer. Nice, nice defensive rotation. Takes the charge, that being Tori Schlegel. Great job of rotating there. Substitution, Greenway getting a quick breather. She'll come right back in. Schlegel's high school team at Eden Prairie went 22 and 10 this past season. She averaged 13 points, three rebounds a game, and shot 39% from three. Greenway spotting up on that right wing. She was waiting for it. I think we can mention there's a shot clock in today's game. <laughs> that may be the last time that I mentioned there is a shot clock in today's game. This is not exactly Norman Dale and four passes at this point. Well, both teams are extremely well coached. No doubt. And Zedeker, was she fouled or did she commit the foul? Let's see. Yeah, she was fouled. She was fouled. Yeah. That was Crump that commits the foul. That is the fourth team foul, so no bonus free throws just yet. And again, no one plus one today. This is all two-shot bonus once you get to a fifth foul in each quarter. Bree Bowman checks in for the first time in the contest, number 24 for North Tartan out of Prior Lake, Minnesota. Okay, should be, a, I bet she's gonna be a cross in the paint. There's the cross. It's a timing play. Good defense. Vandell left it short. Yep, nice defense by North Quick Tartan. Quick glance at the clock, plenty of time for Wilson. Greenway Ooh. slings it to Tool. Couldn't get it off the short corner, so to speak, and out of bounds to all Iowa. North Tartan probably is gonna, nope, they thought they are gonna pick him up. Going to give her a free look, it looks like. The drive all the way down off the window, no. And that is the end That's of the it. quarter. Well, an exceedingly well-played opening quarter. North Tartan 25, all Iowa attack 22. It is the women's 10th grade championship for the U.S. Open. Back after this on USA Basketball and YouTube. At the 2023 U.S. Open Basketball Championships, we had more than 60 teams from across 18 different states, and that included a division for the National Wheelchair Basketball Association. We were really happy to include that group as well. The purpose of this event is to bring the national governing body standards to the tournament space. And so USA Basketball puts on an event that's run by our guidelines and standards, which really are emphasizing fun and development. I want to thank our ISC Sports Network crew that is producing Today's contest, thanks to Jordan Shue, Alan Hughes, and the rest of the
Guys and gals behind the scenes, alongside Pete Smith, Greg Rakestraw, a privilege and a pleasure for us to be here with you at the Memphis Sports and Event Center. Good high-low post play to attack that zone. Just forgot one important thing, catching the ball. Abigail Hazelton had that go off her hands, out of bounds to all Iowa attack. Journey Houston, Ava Zedeker, Maya Crawford, Libby Fandel, and Ashlyn Kupel, the five on the floor for all Iowa. Zedeker's shot does not go. Tool the rebound, but kind of a tough angle to make that pass and turns it right back to all Iowa. Five out offense here for the team in red that is the home team on the scoreboard today. Tuple, quick double. Yeah, good defense. Shot clock may actually be a factor here. Kupel forces oh, it up gosh. and got it to go. Well, she had that in her eye. She was looking to create that shot and take that shot, and she made it. She's got five. Here's a half-court trap again out of the 2-3. Ball deflected, taken away. So back-to-back -back turnovers by North Tartan. You may give up a three, but you may also cause a turnover when you jump on that. Fandel did a good job of keeping that back foot planted. Never moved that pivot foot. Now Crawford down the lane. Bumped off the spot. Green Ripped way. away and taken away by Randy Wilson. Or Wilson, excuse me. Was that Greener or Wilson? It was Greenway. Yep. Greenway will pull from 21. No. And a jump ball will be called. And the arrow will give it back to all Iowa. Jaden Hale now will check back in. We have Tool a breather. Hale attends Horace High School in Fargo, North Dakota. She has been offered by Green Bay, always a powerhouse in the Horizon League. South Dakota, Central Michigan, and by her hometown, Bison of North Dakota State. And partner, they pronounce it with a Z, even though there's no Z in Bison. Bison. Bison, Bison. is how it is said in North Dakota. Nice yep. step through by Crawford. She's fouled. She'll shoot two. She plays very low with the basketball, so she's able to get around players because she's lower than them. Gets to the rim there. We take a look at the replay. Look how low she is. She kind of hooked, got a little way with the hook there, but when you play low, you can get away with that a lot because the, the ball is seen before the hook by the official. She drains the first one. Crawford attends Ankeny Centennial High School in Iowa. She had 10 points in yesterday's semifinal win. It offers from Murray State, Colorado State, and Bradley. Of course, two of those three now members of the Missouri Valley Conference. And all Iowa attack. Now Seesaw is in front at 26 to 25. And again, the extended zone by all Iowa. That's yeah, got him out of whack a little bit here. Still haven't scored the second quarter. North Tartan. Good high low look. Hale. Waits for traffic to square through. She gets tied up. Or she can go for yeah. three seconds. You have to the ladder. Three yeah. second violation. I thought it was getting awful close. Usually you get, usually when that ball comes in to give you a little extra second or two once the pass comes in, but when she couldn't get her shot off. Before the ball is inbound and North Tartan will ask for a timeout. It'll be a 30 second timeout. And again, let's state the timeout rules. Four timeouts, that's pretty typical. Difference is it's two fulls and two thirties, and we do not take any additional media timeouts for these games today here in Memphis. And I know you are familiar with this facility. For those maybe that are watching for the first time this week, tell us about the venue in which we are playing today. Well, Viestel was the designer of this beautiful venue. Hosts 16 basketball courts, 32 volleyball courts, as I understand. Uh, a plethora of parking, relatively new, and I just think it's a wonderful facility. And we are in what I would call the collegiate section of Memphis. Lemoyne Owen, Christian Brothers is literally down the street. University of Memphis is maybe five minutes away. And from my vantage point, you won't be able to see it on camera, I'm looking out at the old school home of the Memphis State Tigers, the Mid-South Coliseum, and the Liberty Bowl is just off to our left here just east of downtown Memphis. Yeah, it's a sports mecca when it comes to this side of town. North Tartan now moving to, yep, just a straight man-to-man -man defense. Looked like a zone just the way the attack was lined up offensively. Five out for all Iowa. Are oh, the drive. Fandel scores it. Nice take. She's got nine. She and Spicer have been the one-two punch so far for all Iowa, and they have scored six consecutive points 
to start the quarter. I would think Aaliyah Crump has to get a shot up here pretty fast for North Tartan. They have kind of stalled out and forgot that she's on the floor. She had a great first quarter, 11 first quarter points. No touches here in the second quarter that I can remember. Low 1-4, offense trying to see if she can break it down. Crawford, <laughs> again, has turned that shot down twice. Good take to the basket, though. Great spacing. That's Journey Houston. She is from Davenport, Iowa, Davenport North High School. Her team got to the state quarterfinals in Iowa this past year. So it's an 8-0 run for all Iowa. Yeah, the zone has really done a nice job of taking Crump out. Let's see if Greenway can hit a shot here. Step back, no. All Iowa trying to make it an Iowa sweep. Houston off the window. Back-to-back -back buckets for Houston. And North Tarn's already burned one time out this half. You don't really want to take a second unless you have to. Leaves you just two for the second half of the game. Tool will check in next stoppage in play. Well, they are on the catch every time Crump catches it. She does get a shot off this time. Not that time. The crash by Greenway. Great crash. And she's got three years of high school left to play. Wing shot does not go. Crawford hustles for the rebound and rips it away. Now, there's a lid on the basket for North Tartan, but their shots aren't the best either right now. Three by Fandel. Got it. Rhythm shot. Caught it in rhythm and shot it. A dozen for Fandel. She had 22 in the semifinal North yesterday. Needs another timeout. 13 0 yeah. run yeah. by all Iowa. Timeout called by North Tartan. They'll burn another 30 second timeout. Hate to burn it, but they need one right now. Absolutely. You see the fans that yeah. made the drive from Iowa. We Tell me about Dixon Jensen, the head coach of this All-Iowa team. Yeah, he founded this All-Iowa attack team uh, in 2004. He's been coaching and running the program since his existence. He's had daughters playing the program. He's, uh, he just does a wonderful job coaching this program. Seen a large, large development in this program. And uh, I talked to him before the game. He, uh, he really has his heart in the right place, Greg. He, he just really enjoys coaching these kids. We'll talk about uh, Gerard Corey and, and Greg Dietzel here, Dietzo here in a little bit when we get to North Tart because they have a lot of experience with their program too. We take a look at Gerard talking to his squad. Five and one this week. Said they had a little bonding time. There was a little power outage here two days ago during the tournament. And the, the team bonded and played some games just outside of basketball and says this team just really has great camaraderie. Right now they just can't get any points on the board. Haven't scored here in the second quarter. Three by Greenway with all kind of space. Can't just get a better shot. Yep. Yeah, can't get a better shot for a better player right now. You just there's a lid on that basket. Yeah, you've talked about maybe the shot section has been best. That was a great yeah. shot, wouldn't go. And then literally all Iowa, they are, they are the absolute definition of modern basketball. Either they are going to the rim, or they're spacing from 20 feet. Right now they've been getting downhill and that draws a foul. Yeah, Jaden Hale being the aggressor there. Oh, nice play, got it. Short corner, missed it, but had a great look at him. I say got it, that means you execute the play and right. got it. Greenway draws the foul. First against all Iowa of the quarter. Yeah, only three <laughs> fouls in the quarter, first in the quarter. And, as you and part of that is the, the, as much zone as all Iowa's yeah, playing. Three point shots. Fouls. Yeah. Yep. Now they're in some man to man defense. The attacks, oh, they are. yeah, they are. Just can't tell because North Tartan's not moving a lot. There's a switch right there. Play Wilson. Cross. Greenway all by her lonesome, just couldn't hang on to it. You know, speaking as a coach, you get these periods where you've worked. You know, this is the end of July. You've worked with your squad all year, all summer, I should say, all season, their summer season, and you've played so well. And to this point right now, their timing's just really off. Uncharacteristic turnover there for North Tartan. North Tartan lost their last game of pool play as Fandel misses from three. Wilson trying to lead the charge, but Koopel just couldn't stop in time. Gives it right back to North Tartan. Yeah. Got a break there. Both these teams are five and one. Again, you can lose a game or even two in full play and qualify for the championship bracket. But they have gone undefeated since the round of 16 began <laughs> late in the day on Saturday. We've done four championship games now, and three of the four teams have at least one loss that played in that championship game. Two-point field goal by Tory Schlegel. 
much needed. In fact, that's North Tartan's first, first basket of the quarter. And then steps called against all Iowa. Yeah, you beat me to it. Again, I still would like to see more touches by Crump. Aaliyah Crump has been very quiet here since about the three minute mark in the first quarter. Yet to score after that, but she got off to a great start with 11 points. Wilson steps into one, that does not go. But good job by Schlegel, goes and gets it, and she's got back-to-back -back baskets. And Schlegel from Eden Prairie, Minnesota. So back to a six point game. Crawford draws the foul. Well, she just plays quicker than she probably is athletically, again, because her, her body is so low to the ground when she drives. Keeps that center of her body just down low, and she can get past players. See if she can make a couple free throws here. One to two from the line so far. Back to a seven point lead. Missed that one. Hale the rebound. Two players cut Crump off on the drive. She's trying to seek her shot, can't find it. Again, a long two, but Schlegel it was off immediately. <laughs> Went and got it, but then couldn't find a teammate on the rebound. And Houston will bring it to the front court. Mandel just forced the issue, uh, nothing there. Yeah, super defense there by Hadley Toole. Yeah, the length of Toole at 6-2 caused her problems. The hesitation, the scoop and score by Wilson. She's got 10. She and Crump have 21 of their 31. And it's down to a five-point game. Zedeker drew the foul. I think she was okay until her arm kind of broke the plane and went down. If she keeps that arm straight, I think she's... She's probably made a good defensive play there. In any way, she didn't give up a layup. She tried to stay in front of the ball. Fourth team foul now on North Tartan. It's going to put Iowa in the two-shot opportunity if they do draw another foul here before the end of the quarter. So Zedeker, first team All-State in Iowa this past year. Misses the first of two. She averaged 20 points, five rebounds, three assists a game, and shot 42% from three-point range. At 16 yesterday in the semifinal win against Boo Williams. And you went and spent some time with Boo this morning, correct? I did go see Boo. I started working the five-star camp in 1984, and he was a legend then even as a coach at the camp. Worked for about 10 years. We figured out when we were talking, we worked about 10 years together before Boo stayed in Virginia and started his AAU program and took it to another level when girls basketball really uh, hit the scene, per se. Zedeker commits the foul. Attack back in that zone again. Crump. Oh, nice look by Crump. Creates a great look for yeah. Tool. It's her second I mean, field goal. They are just really guarding her tight, not giving her any air to breathe, per se, and that time she makes a good decision. Tough foul on Hadley. Wasn't really trying to foul, but that will be the two-shot foul opportunity. Fifth team foul in the quarter on North Tartan. So Zedeker goes right back to the free throw line. She can cut this to a two point game and that's really <laughs> surprising as, as big of a lead. Well, I say, I'm sorry, put it to a five point game. It's surprising North Tartan has cut this lead back to four until that free throw. As it got to be double digits there for a while. All Iowa now 10 of 14 from the free throw line in this game. Their ability to get to the line has been a big difference. Tool, two, no. Burridge does just enough. Crawford tracks it down. Here's Spicer, who sat for a good oh. check of the second quarter. Immediately, good things happen as she returns. Fandel has 14. Oh, great vision there. Great vision there by Spicer. Ball tipped up, taken away. Now a chance to push it right back to double figures heading to halftime. Burridge started, has not scored. Good patience by Iowa. Recognize the situation. Zedeker. Zedeker's doing a good job of 
She is basically flying in and seeking out contact and working her way to the free throw line. Yeah, I tell you, Greenway did almost everything right there. She, without just getting out of her way, and Zedeker was the instigator of that foul. She just really put the pressure on her. And boy, she's got to the free throw line a few times today already. So Zedeker connects. <laughs> Rainey Wilson will check back in. Zedeker, all five of her points have come from the line. So it was a four-point game and a quick 5-0 burst here by all Iowa. Crawford hustling, who touched it last. Oh, wonderful job by Crawford. She just kind of snuck in there. I don't think Wilson really thought that she was going to make that much of an effort to get to the defensive rebound. Slapped it off her leg, and now they've got a chance to get this lead back up to double digits here with a basket. Shot clock and game clock difference is about 12 seconds. Well, you can tell Divine Burridge is a point guard because she is just being very heady here and knowing when to go and when not to go. Spicer from 25. No. Rebound controlled by Greenway. Outlet pass tip. Spicer reads it. Clock is on your screen. Zedeker saves it. Crawford can't find it. Hale from midcourt. Bank. Yep. Misses it, and that is that for half number one. North Tartan led after one. Then all Iowa attacks for the next 13 points. They'll take a nine-point lead to the break of this 10th grade championship game. You're watching Women's U.S. Open Great Championship here on USA Basketball and on YouTube. It's the 24th Nike Hoop Summit, but most importantly, it's the first time that the women's side is going to participate as well. Team World versus Team USA. Look at right, look at right, look at right, look at right, look at right. Look at right. There's the steal, and there's Collier. by Team USA, forcing a turnover. Bronny James on the break. And one! Oh. KK Arnold on the other side. How about the pesky defense? Let's go, KK! Donovan, the block, and then the basket. I'm trying to get you, and I still want that score. Yeah. Not to pass it. Yes, man. Oh, let's run it out. We need to be up 10 going into the second. All right, say that, say that. Come USA on three. USA. USA. Another steal. Oh! Caliente. Going inside immediately, and Cunningham sealing and finishing. Winning culture, gold standard, and we out. Who sent it? Let's go. USA on three. One, two, three. USA! Coach came yesterday when we interviewed him. He was so impressed because he said, you didn't have to be here. You don't need to be here. So why are you here? I actually enjoy playing basketball, being around my peers, and knowing that they're going to bring the best out of me, I bring the best out of them. You know, for me, that's what it's all about, just having that, having that joy. Trying to add to the 11-0 run. Carmelo for three. How about that? What a big shot. We went four years for this battle. We used to put America basketball back where it's supposed to be. On top. Anthony has to put it up. That's good. A three-pointer on a broken play. Big Lee Muhao in front of him. No chance for Lee. It's one of the great.
great scorers in international history. Had him exactly where he wanted him. It hasn't really sunk into me yet that, you know, this is four Olympics for me. And having a chance to win three gold medals, it's not sinking in right now. Maybe after the fact, maybe years down the line when I sit back and kind of recap kind of my life and my career, maybe sink into me. We got one final half of basketball left to go here on USA Basketball and YouTube, 42-33. All Iowa attack leading Tartan North, looking to make it an Iowa sweep and have both of their 15U and 16U programs win the ninth and 10th grade US Open Championships. As the highlights fly by, Pete, what changes, if any, do you think we'll see in half number two? Well, North Tartan has to figure out a way to play a little bit better against that 2-3 all Iowa attack zone. They really struggled in the second quarter. Uh, they got outscored 20 to 8 in the second quarter, North Tartan did. Give all Iowa attack credit. They really found and neutralized uh, Aliyah Crump, uh, or Aliyah Crump. She had got off to a great start, but the zone, as you'll see, really just negated her as we're getting right here to start our second half action. 14 points, Libby Fandel led the way for all Iowa attack. Aliyah Crump with 11. Quick three by Greenway does not go. Greenway's had a tough shooting day. She scored two. Good job by Hale to battle for it on the ground but because they just got the first possession of the third quarter. A jump ball will give it back to all Iowa attack. Yeah, Madden Greenway scored really early. First minute of the contest has not scored since the 5'8 point guard that we've talked about uh, much in the first half. She is rated 15th in her class nationally by ESPN. She had 60 in a single game in her high school season. Three does not go for Devine Burridge. And the rebound corralled, then Burridge tips it away, but touched it last. It'll stay to North Tartan. And Burridge, nice job anticipating that pass by Greenway, sending it up the court to Wilson. And North Tartan based in Minnesota. All, all Iowa attack, I think you can figure out where they're from. And back to the zone here for the attack. Wilson surprisingly turned it down well, the first time. <laughs> they were not, oh, Iowa, a little confused on what defense yep. they're supposed to be playing. Three of them were playing zone, two were playing man. Sometimes when <laughs> you're not sure, the other team isn't sure either. Oh, it gets them off guard too, you're right. The unintentional yeah. amoeba from all Iowa attack. And no harm done for the team that's got a nine point lead and clad in red today. And a man here by Tartan. Spicer goes right down the lane, left wow. hand score it. She's got 13 and partners she can play. You say she has an offer somewhere? A uh, plenty of them. <laughs> Too many for me to name. High low, there's Hale on the low block, scores it. Yeah, she scored the first basket of the contest and now finally getting on the scoring track here to start the second half. Inside out, spot up three, Fandel. Such a pure jump shot. You think? <laughs> 17. It's a great one, yeah, you're not a kid. Marquette, BYU, Murray, Illinois State amongst those that have offered her. I know some of those schools are here to watch today. Rebound corralled by, Bur by uh, Houston. Vandell turns this one down. Zedeker does as well. Yeah, they can, they can take their time. And it's right in front of their bench, so you can hear Coach Jensen telling them, be patient, get a good shot, got him in man-to-man. -man. You can't be too patient here because right now we've got five people just standing, letting her drive to the basket, but it worked. But with all that spacing, <laughs> yep. Burridge knows she had an angle to attack, and she gets her first bucket of the day. And the lead now grows to its largest at 14. Crump. There's Crump. She needs more touches. I know I've been sounding like a broken record, but she's got to find a way to score and break up this 2-3 zone. That, that was literally from the other side of town. Yeah. And then Burridge just started her move before she actually hit caught the basketball. Well, as you've referred to, Greenway has had a tough shooting game so far. That can change any minute, but Crump right now is, I think, someone they got to get that ball to that right side wing to her. Wilson for three. Nope. And the ball is tied up. We'll stay right here. In defense to North Tartan's players, Crump's not moving without the ball very much. She's kind of standing on that right wing and not really working hard to get herself open. Okay, she's going to look for a lob pass in the top on this out-of-bounds play. They're going to change it up. Yep. 
Yep. The attack saw it coming, so they're going to change it up here. Shot clock for three to 20. The pull by Wilson is good, about 17 feet away. She's got a dozen. Yeah, she's making up for it from that standpoint. And a silly turnover by the attack, just a careless turnover. So North Tartan getting some opportunities here. Come heck or high water, they're getting some good opportunities. Crawford checking back in. Two really key players for Iowa. Crawford checking back in, along with Koopel, who had a couple big baskets there in the second quarter. Coach Jensen was not happy about that exchange. <laughs> Wilson three, no. Ooh. But Tool had the weak side glass, just couldn't hang on to it. So now Crawford races out. Crawford attacks with the left hand, and Crawford, yeah. shot blocked, will stay here. Double team there by Greenway and Wilson. Just a quick check of the sidelines. Coaches in attendance here. Tennessee, Murray State, Illinois State, Gonzaga, Oklahoma, Texas, Tulsa, Michigan State. Not bad. Michigan a little bit farther down. There you go. Yep. Three in the corner by Kupel does not go. She shot 53% from three-point range, a freshman in high school in South Dakota this year. And that's going to be a kickball. We'll stay right here. And again, our managers are on top of it. I was giving you that opening. I was waiting. <laughs> they have really been out there to get all the wet spots here in beautiful Memphis and the Memphis Sports and Events Center. Quick inbounds play, knocked away. It'll remain North Tartan ball. A little more than three minutes into our third quarter of this 10th grade championship. These are primarily high school juniors to beat. Crump couldn't get it to go. Couldn't quite get to the rim. Close enough for that left hand finger roll. Houston takes it all the way to the low block before kicking out to a teammate. All Iowa tackles a little more floor balance. Good take by Houston. Her third field goal, she's got six. 5'11", small forward that can put it on the floor. She and her high school teammate, Devine Burridge, on this all Iowa attack team. Greenway just having a rough day shooting, but Toole continues to extend possessions. Yeah. Crump oh. couldn't finish. Crawford got knocked to the floor. It's the loose ball foul, hustle foul against North Tartan. You know it was incidental because Tool would not be, not be the one you would think would run over somebody. Great length, tall, 6'2". She attends Alexandria Area High School. Now North Tartan in the 3-2 zone. We would call these old odd front zones back in the day, but more and more teams are playing this to combat three-point shooting. Okay, so yo-yo. It's a 1-2-2 because two, two, they've got Tool going from the top to the bottom to guard the block. So technically it's going to be a 3-2 a with a yo-yo. She going from the nail hole of the free throw line down to both blocks to guard the post because she can do that at 6-2. I, when I had a player like that, I tried to use that defense implemented from time to time. It can be really effective, a good change of pace too. Spicer will check back in. Three in the corner by Fandel, got it. She loved it. She, her eyes lit up when Coach Jensen called that play from the sideline. She was shooting it before it was in her hands. <laughs> 20 <laughs> for Fandel. She Thank had you, 22 Coach. yesterday. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Three by Wilson is good. She answers. She's got 15. Well, Wilson, that is her second made three. Lead back to 11. Okay, you usually want to get on against this kind of zone. You want to get to the baseline. The baseline is usually open. Spicer. Yep. I'm not sure. Again, I, I like the change in defense by North Tartan just to throw something different. I'm not sure you can zone this group from Iowa. Hoselton tracks it down. I just think that Coach Coach Corey just felt like we got to try something different. I've been in that position. Got to try something different. Wilson, the step back. Got it again. Well, she can shoot it. 
<laughs> you can see why the list of college coaches I just rattled off are here. There is some significant talent on the floor. Well, from two neighboring states. Right. You just got to think the Big Ten's licking their chop <laughs> right. when they got people in the backyard. <laughs> and, oh, by the way, Creighton's pretty good just down the road, too. So Brianna Bowman will check in, as will Tori Schlegel. Bowman played briefly, did not score. Schlegel had four points in the first half. Bowman plays at Prior Lake High School. Shot clock reset to 20. Now they're in 2-3 zone. They switch back to a 2-3 against this attack squad. Vandell splits the defenders, just missed it. Can't get a better shot than that. Nice passing. Reverse it. Reverse it. Three subs oh. on the floor here for North Tartan. Catch and shoot three. Bowman just wow. came in. Why not? So you know, some players need to run down the floor a little bit. Others say forget that. Bowman <laughs> knocks it down. Deep three, Spicer no. Oh, long, long, way ill-advised pass there by Wilson. Right, you know, nice idea to be unselfish, but way too long a pass cross court there. Had a chance to cut it to six or five there. Plenty of time, but right now the attack just has the, the game at their pace. Now they're back to the one, two, two zone. Fandell's is going to wait for the ball in the corner. That's the open spot. There's a reason why she was waiting for the ball in the corner. Yep. Yep, that's the bad thing about that zone. Gives that baseline shot a good look. And obviously, with the college line, we have gotten a level where that's a closer three-point shot. Right. Cut to the basket by Schlegel. She's got six. In other words, that's the spot you have to defend. You can't give up that look. Vandell's now in the other baseline corner if it rotates her away. Well, they've got shooters on the floor. We, we've seen what Jordan Spicer can do from three. You've got to guard both sides of the floor in this zone. That's the tough part. Shot clock at eight. Zedeker, Spicer. In time, it does at the rim, yeah. but that was as effective as that zone has been against all Iowa. Sure was. That's Under a, a minute nine to go. Game yep. Here with 45 and counting. Found the middle. Nice move by Tool. Just oh. left it short. She faded away just a little bit. She took for granted she was going to make it. Was getting back on defense. Mandel. I think she's earned the right to let that one fly. Hoselton played for the Minnesota State Champs. Got the rebound for North Tartan. Schlegel lines it up. Misses everything. And Iowa can hold for one, which is what Dixon Jensen wants his team to do, which is why Zettiger, the point guard, says, give yeah. me that. Yeah. I will slow this down. <laughs> Spicer couldn't drop any better. Splash. 19 for the St. Louis area native, and it's a 12-point lead as the state of Iowa and this single program, all Iowa attack, Look to sweep our ninth and 10th grade championships. The three has been the thing for the attack. We're back in a moment here on USA Basketball and YouTube. At the 2023 U.S. Open Basketball Championships, we had more than 60 teams from across 18 different states, and that included a division for the National Wheelchair Basketball Association. We were really happy to include that group as well. The purpose of this event is to bring the national governing body standards to the tournament space. And so USA Basketball puts on an event that's run by our guidelines and standards, which really are emphasizing fun and development. I want to thank Jordan Shu and Alan Hughes, the rest of our tremendous ISC Sports Network. A lot of our 
Young and went on cameras in the truck today. But they're not doing these games. They're doing the Memphis Redbirds games here locally. Downtown, just up at Beale Street. Great to work with them over the course of the last few days. And alongside Pete Smith, Greg Rakestraw with you. Final quarter of action here from Memphis on this Monday morning. Zedeker, a long two, got it. Boy, I liked her confidence here. First possession. That's her first field goal in the contest. Correct. She scored from the line, but she looked really confident there, the point guard. Greenway also a long two and just not been her day. And she's a phenomenal player. Yes, she, she is. Just can't buy a bucket today. North Tartan starts the fourth quarter, and man, they played a lot of zone late in the third quarter. Good charge taken there by North Tartan. Now, I, I think the... Abby Hazelton. Yeah, coaching, Hazelton. St coaching staff is going to say, hey, w was she out of the semicircle? That's the only gripe. She was set, <laughs> but she is a secondary defender. Was she inside the dotted line? So that will be a foul against yeah. Journey Houston. Yeah, it, it's so fast. I tell you, this, this officiating crew has worked tremendously together, both with the coaches this whole tournament and both with the coaches and getting the calls right and, and again, with themselves. These are college officials. These, right. are, these are Division One level officials. So, And that, to me, is one of the biggest differences you see. And you and I get to work both high school and college games. The communication from officials to coaches is so different at the college level. Steele, lead, Fandel, bucket. Libby's got 25. She has been fabulous. And this zone just has really shut down North Tartan. This 2-3 zone, daring them to make a few outside shots. They've made a couple, but not enough to make them switch defense. And they rebound pretty well out of it. Point, in, point taken right there by their point guard. Blocking foul on Wilson. Journey our, Houston, yeah, getting that rebound here, yeah, but yes. In our, in our ninth grade game, all Iowa attack just kind of distance themselves quickly in the fourth quarter, and we may have an exact repeat of that here in the 10th grade game. Well, let's see. I, I believe North Tartan's got a run in them still. There's still plenty of time, but it's got to be a big run, and it can't be too late. Sophia Hawkinson is in there now for North Tartan. First time we've called her name. Crawford turns down the three. Burridge. Oh, nice look. Great two-player game she and Crawford. Crawford got her shot blocked. Here comes Crump. Crump Crawford foul. foul. <laughs> and she goes, what? <laughs> well, you reach down, look like you're almost trying to give a foul in a situation there. <laughs> I love her aggressiveness, though. There's a good look at Gerard Corey, his 18th year with the program at the North Tartan program. And, and you see the longevity in both these programs as to why they're so successful. His assistant, Greg Deedle, has been there 10 years. Hawkinson misses the three. Reverse it. Reverse it. Wide open. She'll try it again. Yep. Better result that time. She made two points yesterday in the semifinal win. Her high school team at Wayzata went 23-5 and five last year. Plymouth, Minnesota, nice suburb of Minneapolis also where she's from. Step through. Oh. Defender flies by and Fandel puts up another. She's got 27. Hawkinson, before she can do about a three, a timeout taken. A full timeout by North Tartan. They've got one timeout remaining with 539 to play. And they've got a 15-point deficit staring them in the face. Yeah, you, part, you part go back. Go back to that first quarter, Greg. It's 25 to 22 in favor of North Tartan at the end of that first quarter. And the 2 3 zone just really, that all Iowa attack put on late in the first quarter, really has been the Achilles for North Tartan. In the second quarter, all Iowa attack outscored them 21 to, or I'm sorry, to 20 to 8 to build that halftime lead of 42 33. And then the third quarter, a three point win by that quarter by the all Iowa attack team, 21 to 18. And here we are in the fourth quarter with a 15 point lead with 6.39 to go. This is our fourth and final game of the 15-year-olds of the and 16-year-olds on Thursday and now Monday. What has impressed you about what you have seen kind of in, in, in both levels on, on the two different days? Well, I'll start with the organization of the tournament. Uh, USA Basketball is just doing a wonderful job uh, of coordinating all this, getting people together. Uh, 
Teams are on time. They're waiting for their games. They're playing hard. But, but just the overall pretty much unselfish play, at least by the championship teams we've watched, the play has been very unselfish. I mean, you're going to get some bad shots occasionally, but unselfish play. Hope Counts is in there for the first time. Too unselfish there, actually. <laughs> Hope and Greenway teammates at Providence Academy. So North Tartan going to get some other players that have not seen as much run today. A little action. Yeah, just to see if they can maybe light a fire. You're not giving up. You're just seeing if maybe a change in the personnel can give them a little bit of spark. And you can tell that Dixon Jensen's going to have them run some clock and take some time and use their shot clock and fire up late threes. And that'll work when you got a player like Spicer who's got 22. I don't know how you defend this team with the, the shooting they have. As long as they can rebound, I think that's why they have a great shot of winning this championship. Six threes <laughs> by Spicer. Fandel will get called for the foul. Third team foul of the quarter against all Iowa attack. But again, the unselfishness, getting the ball to the right player, knowing the shot and time, you know, the situation and time, they got it. I really like this Crump player. She just has had no open looks in the second half. Just one field goal in the second half here. And there she's got almost three players swarming yeah. her when she's trying to drive to the Seneca, basket. Seneca, Crawford, Spicer yeah. all had her in her sights. That's deflected by an all-Iowa player. But yeah. North Tartan, I feel like there's six or seven players wearing red jerseys on the floor as we speak. Yeah, yeah, and it's just been the standard 2-3 zone, but a very active 2-3 zone. They've rebounded well out of it, and they've, they've uh, just kind of shut down the size of the court. There is Abby Tuttle. She's yet to play in today's game. She's in now. She is from North Polk High School. She has offers from Belmont and Bradley, does Abby. You ever been to Polk City? I have not. Well, her high school is on the north side of it. Thank you. <laughs> Captain Obvious. <laughs> Halfway through this fourth and final quarter. Yeah, no hurry to score 72 points already. It's a lot of points again. Oh. Zedeker, a bobble. A rare turnover by her. Scoop and score by Wilson. Well, your reference 72. All Iowa put up 80 against Indiana Elite and 78 against FBC United. We saw them play the, the game before the ninth grade game this morning. Oop, that a bobble? Yep. A little more leeway on those bobbles yeah. in terms of a double <laughs> triple than it used to Sounding be. Sound like an old man, you're right. I don't think I yelled at Clouds in that one, but they just give it a little more leeway, Ooh. and Zedas hope she's all right. Yeah. Took a tumble. And she collided with the knee of Hope Counts. Cooper will check back in. And you're going to see Emily Sorensen in for the first time as well for all Iowa attack. Sorensen from Waukee, Illinois, or Iowa. So now all nine players have played for all Iowa. Give Zedeker a breather. Nothing wrong with that, catch in the backcourt. And again, all Iowa trying to drain as much time on the shot clock in every possession as they can. Fandel shot block, good job by Crump, they're waiting on it. Wilson will pull from 24, no. What you have to do if you're all Iowa is limit second chances. They did exactly that. Problem is, is that Burridge just lost the rock. Oh and then given right back to them by North Tart. But they're there again, and I'm not changing, I'm not making a reference necessarily to guys game versus girls game, but the, the girls have played so much more unselfish than the guys in these four championship games that you and I have been able to uh, broadcast here for USA Basketball. I mean, right there, Crump, a star player like that, typically she's gonna take it to the rim. She makes the extra pass, it was just too long. You know, but, but the, the heart was in the right place and the basketball IQ was in the right place. Good pressure. Ball was deflected. Yep, deflected. Kupel, <laughs> am I open? Yes. Well, Should I shoot it? Yes. I guess if you're not going to guard me, I think I've shown I can make these. She averaged 22-7 and seven <laughs> as a freshman. She was the on the Class A runner-up at her high school. Wagner High School in South Dakota. 75-56. Three, Tuttle, 
Why not? You're on the team. You can make it, right? Everybody getting in the action now. Everybody but Sorensen has scored for all Iowa attack. She was first team all league in her high school conference was Abby. And a timeout taken by North Tartan. But with 208 left to go, this one has been decided. I think this is just kind of a get together to say, ladies, you had a wonderful summer. Yeah, but there you see the victorious team yep. in the, how did you call this? 15 and under, explain the ages so for, so for it's, listeners. It's, so ninth grade championship, 10th grade championship. Ages are largely 15 years old, some younger. Uh, for the ninth grade championship, 16 years old, some younger for the 10th grade championship. But it is going to be an all Iowa sweep. And again, I would imagine you will see two different team photos following this 10th grade game. One for just the winning 10th grade team. And then you'll see the ninth and 10th grade group get together sure. and showcase what they were able to do. And again, a program, Dixon Jensen, the head coach of this, this group of the all Iowa attack started in 2000 and four. Three in the corner. Does not go for Hawkinson. And the rebound by Burridge. I want to thank Jay Demings, Andrea, and the rest of the wonderful USA basketball staff for having us produce a second championship for them this year. We were thrilled to be out at the 3X championships in, at Colorado College and Colorado Springs back in May. Our first chance to be at this Oops. venue in a Shot are traveling going to be called. That's really a little concern right now for all Iowa attack. Of course, the next major event on the radar of most fans for USA basketball, the FIBA World Cup that is coming up. A younger NBA team will make the trip this time around. Only a year removed from the upcoming Olympics in Paris. Three. Got it. Got it. Yep. Schlegel, her first three. She's got nine points. And Fandel with 27. She is still on the floor. So in other words, she can add to that total. Spizer appears done for the day with 22. They're trying to get Sorensen to shot, but she can't get herself up on over that corner to travel. Yep. Sorensen, the only player, Emily, not to score for this all-Iowa attack in this championship game. Oh, yeah, Iowa's got some players, don't they? Wow. Of course, the runners-up this year in women's Division I hoops. <laughs> Burridge has played the majority of the game, the the point guard for this Iowa attack team. She scored two points, but she has affected the game so much with her court vision and getting the ball into the right player's hands to score. And she pulls another rebound down. She's trying to slow things down. Yeah, she's a good player. Good IQ. Okay. Iowa's got all the 50-50 balls in this game too. They've just been very active around the basketball. North Tartan has played hard, but just has not had an answer. And we've mentioned several times, Madden Greenway, an outstanding player, just was not her game today for this North Tartan. This will be the largest margin of victory for, for all Iowa in the Stars bracket, in the championship bracket. Koopal, three, no. Shot clock now turned off with 10 seconds to play. They'll finish just shy of their high in points for the week. One final pass, Counts delivers a three. That does not go, and it is over. Make it a sweep for the All-Iowa Attack. And they win both games in dominant fashion. 78-59, a winner over North Tartan. Pete, your final thoughts on this one. Two, two games that Iowa just, they, they had too many shooters on the floor, quite frankly. I mean, you can pick your poison, you can guard one or two, but they just had too many weapons on the floor in both these championship games. And in this one, congratulations to Dixon Jensen. Ryan Hahn, the two championship coaches for this all Iowa attack team. Their teams by far were ready to play here on Monday morning at the Memphis Sports and Event Center. Fandel with 27, Spizer with 22. They were the two players in double figures for all Iowa. Seven for Zedeker, eight for Koopal, three for Crawford, two for Burridge, six for Houston, three for Tuttle. Trophy has been presented. For North Darton, Randy Wilson with 20, Aaliyah Crump with 14, just three in the second half. Pete, it has been a blast. Hope we have to do it again next year. Oh, great. And how about this crew we had? What a super crew we had today. Tremendous job both Thursday and Monday. Our pleasure to bring it to you.
on USA Basketball and YouTube. Our ninth grade championship goes the way of all Iowa attack. As if you like the reference earlier, second verse, same as the first. <laughs> Tenth grade game goes to all Iowa attack as well. They win this one, 78-59 over North Tartan. Goodbye from Memphis, and thanks for joining us on USA Basketball and on YouTube. Growing the game means that everyone is invited to play. And at the USA Basketball Foundation, we understand the importance that mentorship sparks opportunity for talent BIPOC students to accelerate their professional development both on and off the court. Did you know that young adults with the mentor are 130% more likely to hold a leadership position? By investing in minorities at the onset of their careers after college, we can boost the representation of Black, Hispanic, and Asian American women and Hispanic and Asian American men at manager levels up to 24%. This year, our inaugural cohort for the Torch Leadership in Sport Mentoring Program had eight talented young people. I'm honored to introduce you to two of them, Latyra and Isabel. One of my things that I'm looking forward to doing in the field is possibly going to social responsibility, and I didn't know that until I started this program, so that's one of the benefits that I have gained from that. My favorite part was being able to listen to what we as people within the sports industry can do to help accelerate their movement because that's something that I'm really passionate about is accelerating women in sports. When you support the USA Basketball Foundation, you are investing in programs like Torch to grow the game and ignite a flame in the hearts of BIPOC students across the country. As we prepare to welcome our second cohort, I invite you to tune in over the following week to learn more about Torch and support this vital work.